Live from Paulson Stadium on the campus of Georgia Southern University, welcome to University of Maine Black Bear Football. Next, it's an NCAA Championship Division I AA quarterfinal playoff game as the Eagles of Georgia Southern take on the Black Bears of the University of Maine. A lot of destiny. 37 playoff wins by this school, the most in 1AA playoff history. And for these uh, Eagles, that has meant, as you can see on the flagpole next to me, six national championships. 28 and 1, the Eagles are on their home field here at Folsom Stadium almost unbeatable and in the last six years they have never been knocked out of the top 25 in the national rankings all that it's going to meet a tough task for you Maine says coach Jack Cosgrove absolutely does no question uh, just because if you were to equate this to 1a it's like you're going up against Miami you know a team that's always associated with the upper echelon the top teams and they got the six titles they got the the home field you know 28 and 1 edge uh, deal. They got everything that you think about at this level, 1AA, as it relates to success. And uh, you know, there's no question that uh, um, that helps them in everything they do. You know, it, it helps them um, recruit. It helps them play the game on Saturday. It helps them manage the game on Saturday. That, that confidence that even if we're behind, we're going to come back. We're just starting on those things. You know, we're, you're starting to see that, but they've been doing this since 1985. And so they got a little bit of a leg up on us. And so there's an awful lot to go up against today for these Black Bears. And calling the game today for the all of you back in Maine is George Hale and former UMaine football coach Walter Abbott. Guys? Thank you very much and good afternoon across the state of Maine. Coach Abbott, there's two quarterbacks out there with just two different roles. One guy's a speed guy. The other guy is a backup quarterback who's on a different mission here today. So uh, take a look at it for me and uh, tell me the roles of these two different quarterbacks and what we can expect out of them today. Well, the big thing, George, is Georgia Southern is number one. They're number one in offense, rushing offense. And you can see 10 on your screen, Chaz Williams. He is averaging over 100 yards a game, and he's going to direct a speed offense with him running at the quarterback. On Maine, number 15, John Mesoir is starting his second game. I'm sorry, his third game, his second playoff game, and he's never taken a snap up until these two games. He's big, he's strong, but his main thing is use his offensive line, don't play out of his game. Keep in control and keep it tight. Well, you know, Coach, uh, out here on the field today, they're going to be on uh, grass, but there's not a lot of grass on this field. It's mostly very short. It's a speed track, and that's exactly what Georgia Southern likes. They move the ball, and uh, the other side of the uh, issue is going to be a little crown on the field. So we're going to see whether or not Maine can adjust to this uh, condition out here today. All right, we'll be back here at the wonderful facility here in Statesboro, Georgia, in just a moment. This pregame show is brought to you by Viking Lumber with locations in Belfast, Lincolnville, Vinyl Haven, and Warren. Well, this is deja vu all over again for me. I was here in 1987 when Georgia Southern beat Maine 31 to 28 in overtime. The city has gotten a little bit bigger, but the field looks to me to be about the same. And it's the same story after all of these years, Coach Abbott. They like to run the ball. They will throw it occasionally, but they are going to be moving down the field with two different guys, Williams and Austin, and that's going to be Maine's uh, problem here this afternoon. Chaz Williams, George, is the best running quarterback in the nation. Also, Georgia Southern has the best rushing record of any team in 1AA or 1A in the nation. They average almost 400 yards a game. And believe you me, the main Bears will be challenging them. It's one of the difference is going to be they need pressure from the defensive ends. They haven't seen that style of defense, so hopefully Maine can cause some problems at the mesh point for the option play. The University of Maine has won the toss of the coin, and they always receive. So the Black Bears are going to get an opportunity here. This is a fairly large mountain to climb today. This field is, speaking of mountain, is uh, more or less of a bowl. The temperature at game time is going to be 50 degrees. Wind not a factor. It's out of the east at four to six miles an hour. And it's a grass field. Now Tim has got a special guest on the field just before kickoff. 
Well, thanks very much, uh, George. Jake Eden uh, taking some time right before kickoff. Jake, uh, team ready for this uh, second round playoff game? Yeah, I think they are. I mean, all year we've, uh, we've met challenges, we've overcome adversity, and uh, it's going to be no different today. I think the guys are excited to be down here. It's nice weather, great place to play, great atmosphere, and, uh, you know, I hope, I hope, and uh, we all hope that we come out and play ready, ready to play early. Of course, you're hoping to overcome some adversity, too. You banged up the knee three weeks ago, and uh, you're hoping to play again someday, but uh, it's contingent upon a main win today. You think you might be able to play next week? Uh, you know, it's, it's going to be close. I, mean, uh, I, I was running around yesterday. It felt very good. Uh, and these guys are my inspiration right now. I mean, so I'm so proud of these guys. I'm so happy the way they're playing, and I, I would do anything to be out there right now. So they're my inspiration, and, uh, and hopefully I'll be practicing Monday or Tuesday. Best of luck to the Black Bears today, Jake. Thanks, Thanks very much. Appreciate it. Kickoff time, George, up to you. Well, we're look, looking forward to it here. Scott Sheldon puts his boot into it. Boy, there's hang time. All the way back to the main four-yard line. Montel Owens gets it out to decent field position. He'll come out over the 20 out to about the 23-yard line as we set it up here in this uh, very nice weather. From the standpoint, Walter, we didn't face 70, 80 degree temperatures, and I think that's critical for the main kids. Especially in the second half. You can get by the first half on a hot day, but coming in from what Maine has practiced in very cold conditions, uh, it's going to play well into their hands today. The matches up front will go cover those in a minute now. John Mezzawar, the sophomore quarterback. Maine runs a standard I formation. What new wrinkles they have, I have no idea today, but we'll find out. Fusco comes over to the right side, and Nuoso's in motion. Now there's 21. You're going to carry me a lot. He gets right into it. You hear this crowd getting it into it early. Marcus Williams, sophomore, comes back, picking up a couple of yards out to the 25-yard line. On main on offense, they have a big front line. They're veterans, and they're going to have to control the line of scrimmage. That's a chance main has. They must control the line of scrimmage. The longer they're on the field, the more time the defense will have to rest, and you've got to try to keep... Georgia, South, Georgia Southern's offense off the field. Second down and seven. Maine with a shift over to the left side and back again. I'll get dizzy watching that all afternoon. The pitch and that's going to go in a counter the other way and they read it perfectly and they read Williams and this crowd erupts here at the near sideline. That's a new wrinkle for Maine. And he ran motion to the right, came back, cut to the left, and it's going to be third down. This crowd is known across the country as one of the tougher crowds in 1AA. They've been known to throw a few things at times. But my student spotter to my left says that's not true. They only fight in basketball. What, what you're trying to do right now is uh, make a safe throw for Mesoir. Don't try anything fancy. Stay within the game plan. He should have time. He's going to have to be flushed out of there. He's on the move, and it's almost picked off. He threw it under heavy pressure, and it's incomplete. Maine's going to go three and out, something they did not want to have happen to him on this first drive. They desperately wanted to move the ball, keep that defense off the field, but they're going to have to bring Mello out, and we're going to see the offense from Georgia Southern real early here this afternoon as Mello's going to be kicking from his 14-yard line, and they've got speed back there to burn. That's going to be end over end, and it's going to go out of bounds. And that's not a bad kick. They were trying to keep that thing away from the ant. They're trying to keep it away from Williams. Anthony Williams is a kid that can fly down the field. Now, Walt, quickly, when we get on the offense here, you're going to see what we're going to refer to as double slot. We're going to see a spread formation. Basically, wing T fans in Maine will recognize a double wing. It's a double wing, and for the Maine fans, it's exactly the same offense that Rhode Island showed when they played at Maine. However, it's run at a different level. The quarterback is a very skilled athlete with it, and you're going to follow him. Follow the quarterback. That's going to lead you right to all the action. They run on the toss out to the right side, and they like to speed it. There's Myers going right side midfield. Now, we expected Austin right away to throw a little wrinkle. They're going to come to Mark Myers. It was a slot over the right side. The thing that's happening, George, every time, this is a stat that's unbelievable, every time one of the wingbacks touches a the ball, they average over 12 yards per carry. And that's the top four running backs in the wing position. We're at midfield, first down for the Eagles. They've won a bunch of championships, six national titles. Toss coming the other way this time, and look out for that. Don't let him cut on you. That's what he does best. He cut back up inside. There's Austin. 
Kenny back inside, gets to the 36-yard line, and they're instantly moving this ball down the field on the Bears. What they're trying, they've gone away a little bit from the option right now, and they're just doing the toss plays to read what the defense is going to show. You're going to get a picture, which is going to turn, toss the ball out, a little quick pitch to the outside, and that takes the quarterback action out. Very athletic. Here's Derek. Now, uh, Derek Owen splits out to the near sideline. Occasionally, they'll throw him the ball. Now the quarterback keeps it. He goes inside hard. There's Williams inside the 30 to the 29. Now, if they get down to the red zone quickly with Chaz Williams, you'll see him 95% of the time carrying the ball. He's just a, a we call him the quarterback. He's real, just a, another running back. He is the running back. He's that top rusher for the year. He's rushed for 1,300 yards. And every time he touches the ball, he's going to average 5.1 or more. They score a lot of points. They win by big margins, and they're off. And pitching later, it's on the ground. That's what Maine's hoping for. It kicked out of bounds, and Maine lost the break there. Maine is going to try to make a force him into quick decisions. If when they find in the films that they're throwing the ball on the ground, it's when they made quick decisions. Watch this. He gets tackled right by the ankle. He's going to make a quick decision now. Bad pitch. There it is. It was to Zareen Walden. And the ball goes out of bounds. Maine would have loved to have that ball stay in bounds, get the turnover. It's going to be third down. For the, black, uh, for the uh, Eagles. You know, it's almost confusing to us for a moment. You look down, you see blue and white uniforms against white and blue. But the blue uniforms belong to the Eagles of Georgia Southern. Maine's in a quick blitz. There's a pitch to the right side. Maine's reading that very well. Look at him cut back. Here's Myers. And he's under big pressure and tackled over at the 33 yard line. Excellent pursuit. Rob Kirsten out of South Portland, number 40, making a big play on the outside. And they did a good job stringing that out. Don't let those backs turn up field. They want super highways to run on. But notice they kept his shoulder east and west. Keep him east and west. Kirsten's chasing him down. Then when he has to cut, everybody gangs up on him. Well, Brooks. let's see what they do on fourth down. They've got a great field goal kicker here, and they may go for it right away. Sheldon has kicked 10 out of 14 field goals this year, but he's not in there now. They're going for fourth down. Watch Seven it. yards to go. Watch the pass to the wing back, 34. They really like to get it out to Myers. A little crease pattern. A little delay a game. All right, the clock ran out on him. That forces him back five. Really changes it. Now, By the offense, five-yard penalty. Remains fourth down. Chaz Williams, they're, they're going to punt. Chaz Williams does not have a great passing arm. His ability is from the waist down. They're going to run 88. Georgia Southern the Eagles are going to run 88% of the time. What happens? They lull you to sleep. You go run, 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 and all of a sudden they try to slide in a little pass, and they've hit some big pass plays. And Sheldon's got a 51-yarder this year. He's an excellent punter. He'll be standing at his own 49. Maine makes it on us. He kicks it inside the red zone a lot. They field it and knock it down at about the main four-yard line. We're heading for the first break of our ball game. We're in Georgia and enjoying it. University of Maine Black Bear football. All right, welcome back to Statesboro, Georgia. George Hale with you along with Coach Walter Abbott. And the Black Bears are starting deep in their own territory. Not exactly the field position they'd like to have. Mesowar is going to have to run that offense off the four-yard line. Here comes Marcus out over the eight maybe nine-yard line. Marcus Williams, sophomore, out of Amherst, Massachusetts, 225 pounder, had a great, great day at Appalachian State last week. There's not much of an offense you can run down here. You're really in a tight situation. Meswell wants to keep this ball in control, feed it to your running backs, use your big fullback, Del Semino, and take advantage of the offensive line, especially in the middle, where you have the two guards, big, powerful guards, Jermaine Richardson out of Millinocket and LeConte out of South Portland. Some of those main kids out there that have come through the programs here in the state of Maine. It's great to see them in this. Here's a, they're out to the near side. It's caught. And picked up and run down the sidelines. Is he down? It is intercepted and it is at the main 10 yard line. It is no touchdown. Looks like uh, to me the, that it was Vescara who caught it. 
He's one of the best defenders in 1AA in the nation, and Maine makes the first big mistake he, of the ball game. You're going to see the toss coming up. He catches the ball. It's just a fumble. That's all. Picked up the fumble and ran it in. He stepped out of line. You'll see him step on the line. And uh, that's a big costly turnover for Maine. And Young makes a big block on it. Trying to get dragged for the extra yard. Waller was trying to drag for the extra yard and laid it on the ground. It's a bad time to have it happen. Maine breaks through. Austin is going to be the ball carrier. And that's what Maine's going to have to do defensively. 56. Defensive right tackle for Maine. Dan Johnson came through. Put some penetration in. That hurts the triple option. Well, you know, in all fairness to Mezovar, he did not take many snaps this year. And the University of Maine has lost a lot of offense when Eaton went out of there. And he's going to be really tested here this afternoon by this powerhouse team. Straight up the middle they go. And it looks like uh, maybe Austin again up the shoot. The, you know, it's easy to do play-by-play -play with this team because Chad Williams is going to carry it. Austin's going to carry it. Sometimes they'll let Walden and Myers get in on the act, but not often. If they throw it, they're going to throw it to Derrick Owens. He has, he's the number one receiver for Georgia Southern. Has only 11 catches for the whole year. Some George, guys get 11 in one game. How much are you betting on Williams getting the ball this time? <laughs> Quarterback keeping the ball. He does it all the time, and he's under pressure, and they sack him. Beautiful sack, and Cooper. guess who it is? The All-American Cooper right at him. There's Cooper's great strength for the Black Bears, number four. A guy that could be a Sunday player someday, Stephen Cooper. Buchanan candidate, a senior out of Warren, Massachusetts. Watch number four. Breaking through. He's got a choice to take the gaps. Anytime there's a big gap in there, Cooper has a chance to come in and blitz, which he did there. They're going to force him into field goal. And that's going to come from the 18. It's long enough. It's a bullet. And it is wide. No good. And this kid doesn't miss very often, but Walton came in. And that is his, about his fifth miss of the year only. We'll be back right after these messages. Oh, Walter, there you are. Is that you down there? Is that one of our fans down the field? Do you have these, you have these guys over in Rumford? There's the, there's the eagle. But right now, Maine gets a big break, a little bit of a bad snap, a couple of things have switched either way. Down the shoot, Maine comes out to the 25-yard line. You notice that Maine took a lot wider splits that time in the offensive line. They're going to try to spread that uh, eagle defense out give the Bears. The Bears a little bigger. They want a chance to claw up through the middle. 29, Moma carried the ball. He's that sophomore that comes in. Now, Williams will carry in about two series, and then you get Moma in for one series. This is They've switched here immediately early in the ball game. Second down for the Black Bears. He picks up about six yards on the carry. Maine's Some, offensive line is big, and, and they're mobile. They're a good offensive line. You're going to see a lot of action out of them. Eagles linebackers are smaller. Play action. That's why in trouble comes out of there, but the leg tackle down. And coming on to make the hit on him is going to be Fiscara again. You heard a lot about this kid coming in. He may be as good as anybody around. The thing you like to see as far as the protection, he's got plenty of time here. Southern's strongest part of the defense, in my mind, is the secondary. They have tremendous speed plus size. They're all six one, six feet tall, six two. They're big men and they have tremendous speed, so that puts them a leg up in the secondary. I think the linebackers are a little weak as far as size. They have great quickness. A lot of the Southern teams down here put real small linebackers in because they're facing the option play. Over the middle, incomplete. Broken up, coming quickly in for the Eagles is going to be Joe Scott. Joe Scott, the senior out of Fitzgerald, Georgia, and Maine's going to have to punt it right away. So, Mello, and again, they want to kick it away. You may see kicks you, you think are bad kicks, but it may be designed bad kicks by the Black Bears. They do not want Mr. 81 back there. The Ant, they keep coming down the field with it. He's had some long runs this year. Anthony Williams. Well, they're kicking at him this time toward the sideline, toward the boundary. It bounces toward him. He'll pick it up and come flying. Gets a good block. Trying to get outside. Maine with good pursuit. Nice late tackle brings him down as he came over to the near sideline. Only, only Moma, tailback for Maine, making a big play. Great effort on Moma's part. We're coming back. Stay tuned.
We'd like to take a moment and recognize our sponsors for today's telecast. Without their support, we couldn't be here in Georgia. We hope that you watch their announcements and logos on your screen today. I hope that you take note of it, appreciate their help. We urge that you tell them all about it and help them out too. And Maine breaking into the open and a good run. Uh, excuse me, Austin breaking into the open with blue uniform out over the 39 to the 40 yard line. There is Jermaine Austin, the fullback. And he will carry the ball 60% uh, of the time, probably. There's Coach Sewick from uh, Georgia Southern. He played at Virginia, offensive guard. They have a lot of offensive guards on the staff down here. They need that block and a run of veer. Number six again coming up through there, Jermaine Austin. And uh, Cooper jumps over the top of the pile, number four. His vertical leap is higher than anyone that's ever played at the University of Maine before and higher than most teams in the nation. He's 40 and a half inch vertical leap. And for 235 pounder, that's a great leap. He jumped over the line, made the tackle from behind. All right, we're up to uh, second down, six yards. Maine will give them distance. What they don't want to give them today is the big one. They do not want to uh, give them that long 75, 80 yard run, and they've had a whole bunch of them. Little play action, he's gonna go upstairs and he's got a speed demon going down there and look out, a great catch by Derek Owens. That's only his 12th catch of the year, but it's the big play. That's not what Maine really expected, by the way. They don't do it a lot. Maine defended, Devon Goree was with him, but it was a height advantage on this one. And this is typical of what they do. They fake play action and then just lay it out. Not a great pass, just enough up run under it Garee's right there try to get a hand in to shake it out couldn't do it quickly down to the main 16 yard line they Ch lull you to sleep with the option play and then hit you deep Chaz Williams against the blitz for our viewers in eastern central and northern Maine our next Black Bear TV game will be men's ice hockey January 10th the Black Bears host the Northeastern Huskies the game will be shown on WABI TV in the Vanguard area WAGM TV in Presque Isle flag is down Holden play. Holden penalty against the Eagles. It's a big break for the Black Bears. By the way, mentioning hockey a minute ago, big win by the main hockey program over BC last night. George holding in defending by the offense, 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay first down. In defending the option, everybody needs an assignment. The three people you have to stop. One, number one is the fullback. The ball goes to the fullback first. Number two is the quarterback. Number three is the pitch. So your inside people are going to handle the fullback, and then your linebacker, outside cornerback, will take the pitch and the quarterback, respectively. Unless they've got it mixed up on a stunt, and then the quarterback will be assigned to somebody else. Come Chaz Williams on his own number off that counter. Maine is getting great gang, gang tackling, and they run the counter option, and all these things you can't hurry into your pursuit because they run so much counter option. Villanova leading Fordham, 10-0 at the half in the 8-10 kind of all showdown here. Well, Fordham a little outside the 8-10, but Villanova from the 8-10 hosting today. Fordham beat Northeastern last week, all trying to advance to the semifinals. Second down, it's going to be about uh, 17 yards to go. They've got to go down to about the six-yard line. Coming out in their double slot formation, Chaz on the deep pitch. Look out for the corner, look out all the way. Touchdown! And there is Zareem Walden. You cannot give him the corner. If you do, you're going to be burned. And Zareem Walden takes a nice little dash for pay dirt. Remember, every time the wing back touches the ball, they've averaged over 12 yards. That was typical. They roll you with the option, and then they've just got a few other plays in. When it's a pitch out wide, you've got to turn it up and Shut him down. Here he is. He gets the outside. Once they turn the corner and they're running up the highway, it's over. Scott Sheldon on to do the extra point kicking. Missed the field goal. He's up long and good this time. And it's 7-0, the Eagles. The Eagles have won 27 of their last 31 games, 62 of their last 71, and 15 of their last 18 playoffs. They went about 90% of the time on this field. So when you come to Georgia, you don't want to let them get too far ahead of you. Maine has fallen behind here, seven nothing with 4.28 to go in this first quarter of action. In this natural bowl field, there are people sitting around the bowl up on the, they sell, I guess, some seats up there, or grass seats. 
They're expecting about 10,000 in here today. It's a very nice facility. We've got a lot of main connections. A lot of main people are here today. That was five plays, 71 yards, two minutes and 17 seconds on the drive. Did not take long. And here it is, just a basic pitch outside. And again, they drive off. They get a good block down, down the field. And the corners have to come up. You must pursue the inside. And this is where their speed's going to pay off. You notice the two main players bumping into each other. And that just knocks each other off. You need to get that, de that uh, defensive back needs to turn that in so the linebackers can pursue and tackle from the inside out. All right, the Black Bears to receive it, Maine, 11 and 2 in the regular season, 7 and 2 in the A-10. They're co-champs of the A-10, of course, and their co-champs, Northeastern, have already been eliminated. They beat Appalachian State 14-13 last week to get in here to Statesboro, Georgia. Their second appearance as a team, 1987, Maine went to overtime here. Look at the hang time again, coming down to Montel Owens at the 11, 15 and 20. Had a seam got out to the 25 26 yard line. That's where Maine will put it in play. The Robin, D. Robinson run down. And Maine is going to be trying to look looking for a first down. They need to keep that defensive unit off. Defensive unit's done a good job versus the option. They've been hurt two or three times once on the long pass and then twice on outside pitch plays. Marcus Williams was the running back in the first series, then they went to MoMA on the second series. And I believe Marcus will be back for this series. All right, Mezzoar, the quarterback. And Fusco will move off to the left side. It's Marcus Williams running for daylight on the toss. He comes back up over the 30, 33-yard line. Picks up a little running room. And that's what Maine is looking for, trying to get five yards on that first play. Then you've got a couple of plays to pick up that first down. Eat up the clock. Let that defense rest. Keep that speed offense sitting down. Not a cloud in the sky here at Statesboro, Georgia this afternoon. Team stayed in Savannah last night, which is a lovely city. About 40 miles over here. Maine is a 250-pound fullback. 85, John Gelsomino. He's a great lead blocker for the, what we need. Play action, steps back up. He's got a man there. He's got him completed. At about the 39-yard line, that's going to be Piera over at the left sideline. Now, one thing about Mezwar, early on, he completed his passes, Walter, but uh, he had a drop and he had the uh, fumble. So you really can't blame John Mezwar. He's been very accurate with the ball. He's thrown it right on the letters, right on the numbers, right there again, well delivered. Receivers, when you catch the ball, cover it. They're going to be on you. You're going to get hit immediately, so cover the ball. Freshman McMahon will come out to the near sideline. He'll be working with Waller. And it's going to go Marcus outside, and they chase him pretty good toward the 40-yard line inside, maybe to about the 41-yard line. Derek Butler, the linebacker from South Carolina, came over and grabbed him. So the Black Bears have a third down coming. Pretty good crowd at the far side, like quite a few main fans. So a lot of main, the main ladies wanted me to make sure they said all, all the coaches' wives and the ladies are had their shopping tour in Savannah yesterday, and they're out here making noise for the Black Bears. So a lot of main fans in here today. And Roger Ellis had his typical eating uh, trip. Yeah, he he did well. He didn't do bad. <laughs> right, back deep on the fly, he throws it away, intended to the near sideline, but uh, no, nobody there threw it away. So more of a crown on this field. A crown on the field means from the center of the field to the sidelines is a 15-inch drop, and that's for shedding rain. And this is a great field for rain. They said uh, even during a hurricane, there's no puddles that come on the field. So at Maine, the field is almost flat. So the quarterback, when he's throwing to the sidelines, is throwing a little bit high than normal. I asked uh, Bob Wilder, the offensive coordinator, and Bob said that uh, he felt he could handle that fairly well today. Georgia Southern fans in at Mezwar, the quarterback. Never expected to be in the situation he's in. Fires caught. Great catch by Pierre at the 45-yard line for the first down. It was thrown high. And the young man, the sophomore, Chris Pereira, went up and grabbed it. He's a 6'3 player, so he can get off his feet pretty well. That's a great reception. He's got a great jump reach index. He's up around 37 inches. And watch him go up after the ball. The ball's thrown high right here. But he's up in the air. Great hands catch. Then he tries to make him cover it up. Keep it covered. There aren't many weaknesses on the Georgia Southern team. But a good passing attack 
Well, it, it, it could looks open like, up the run for me if they can get Marcus free. Everybody's right up tight on the line of scrimmage, and they're going to play main tight. They think they've got more speed, so they're going to go with them. Well, Marcus isn't going very far. He's been kind of handled a little bit in there by Mike Ward. Didn't get much. In fact, see where the spot is. Maine has struggled in third down conversions this year. They're, they only convert about a third of the time. What they have done this way this year has been very good on the road. They're 11 out of their last 15 road games they've won. And they've definitely been a second half team this year. So we'll see how this first half goes. The Bears are down 7 nothing, But they're in good territory at the 46 yard line with a second down and 10 against the Eagles. Now the Eagles have dropped back a little bit. The last time they, they ganged right up in the box on a first down there coming up tight and playing man and playing it really tight to the line of scrimmage. Oh, man, I, it was a real miscommunication and Mezwar was, was trying to pull out of there quick. The linemen were trying to move. Everybody was trying to do something. That's going to make it second and 15. By the offense, five yard penalty, remains second down. We've got a minute and 33 to go here in this opening quarter. Main down 7-0. Last week, Maine had uh, a good conversion rate. They were 8 for 16 last week against App State. So they need to get some of those and keep this their defense off the field, keep this offense on there as long as they can. Fusco, the big tight end, is flipping around. Pereira now will go to the left side. Williams gets the call. He's got daylight. Look out. He's a hard-running back that he punishes the tacklers. He goes all the way down to the 31-yard line. That's he's Marcus Williams. He's a great young back. He's 228 pounds. He carries the load with him, and that's what Maine wants to do. They want to physically, they want to get the Beefaloes up front going after those gazelles on defense. That's what you're trying to match up. Beefaloes versus gazelles. And here it is. Power ball. There's a good lane. Marcus cuts outside, covers the ball. He wanted a face mask out of that one. Beefaloes and gazelles, the problem is you didn't recognize an eagle. <laughs> Williams, seven carries, 35 yards so far here in the ball game for the Black Bears. And the first down. Now some play action. Bezwar looking, and he got hit as he came down. Hit hard. Coming on board is Derek Butler again, the linebacker from Orangeburg, South Carolina. And he was coming forward, and his arm took a pretty good shot. Pass defense broke down on a weak side. You'll see the lock up right here. He slips by, and just as Mesovar is getting ready to deliver on a post pattern that was open, uh, he got nailed from the blind side. Quarterbacks need to be protected on the backside. They're not looking that way. They're not checking that way. They're but focusing on the receiver in the middle. Amazingly, this is the only the third time that Maine has appeared on grass this year. Because, of course, with that new field at Maine of a couple of years ago. They were blitzing on Williams, and he got away from the first tackler, but not the rest of them. There's a horde coming through. Michael Ward, who is, I'm calling his name frequently, came in and nailed him right around the knees. And they tackle low. They tackle hard. And the loss on the play for the Black Bears, that ball's going to be spotted at the 35-yard line. They're not a big blitzing team. The Eagles do not do a lot of blitzing, but when they do, they've got real good speed to bring it with. Notice how they broke off the route. Force him into the outside and right into traffic. Tell the young quarterback got himself that third down conversion problem I was talking about. Remain has not been greatly successful this year. He's going deep. He's going long. Just pass interference. And I don't know if it's going to. I don't. I don't know, I don't which, know which way it's, way it's, going. Way it's going to go. I think it may go against Maine. McMahon was shoving back. McMahon catches it for the touchdown, but the flags are out. We knew one was coming down. That question whether it's offense or defense. McMahon into the end zone with it. We'll take a look on the instant replay. That was Stokes. Deion Stokes with him. And we haven't. Uh, <laughs> By the defense. By the there defense. There's the touchdown. Touchdown. We knew the contact occurred, but you got to wait for the call, and we'll see it on the replay. Here it is. A nice ball up high. Let the receiver run under it. McMahon, number five, going out, just running under it. That was a contact right there. Big catch. They went down. down. He Stokes hit him first, and he was just defending himself. And here's the extra point try to have it all tied up by Mike Mello. That ball is up. And good. And the Black Bears have tied this ball game up here in Stateboro, Georgia. 7-7. And you got to say to Mezwar, 
Young man, you've come a long way in a short period of time. He's and he's got this ball game tied up in the postseason. 7-7 here in Statesboro. Brand new ball game. We're all tied up at 7-7. Seven to seven. A scoring drive of 10 plays, 72 yards, 34-yard pass completion, 4 minutes and 28 seconds. And Jack Cosgrove has got to be feeling a lot better about life right now. He's got the maybe any doubts of his players' minds or out of their minds. They're playing confidently now. This is a much better drive, Walt. Now they're on the board. They got that beyond them. And uh, you don't score on Georgia Southern in here a lot. They don't give up many points. So this is a big move for the Black Bears. They average less than, they average 12 points, giving up 12 points per game. Main tries a squib. Up back, takes it. That's uh, going to be T.J. Anderson. Yep, T.J. Out of Lithonia, Georgia. I have to learn all my Georgia pronunciations down here, and I don't have to say it with you all too often, but we're going to see Chaz Williams again, and we'll see the double slot offense coming out here again. Now, the play that has hurt Maine has been the pitch to the outside. They stuck one long pass play in on the rest. It's been pitch to the outside. The option play, they've done a real good job about it. They're going to Maine was offside. They're refusing the uh, the Eagles are going to refuse the penalty, which they should because the ball is on the 40 yard line. Right. No sense doing it again. Georgia Southern this year has had 150 touches coming in, means 150 drives they've had. Only 23 of them have been three plays and up. That's amazing. Powerful offense. Number one in the nation, rush in 1A and 1 double A. Crossing out to the near sideline of Myers. Maine staying with it pretty well. Stretched that out. Gave him a yard or two. A lot of good bear tackling on it. Coming up quickly was Cusano. Oh, boy. I don't like what I just saw there. Number 11. Uh-oh. Brendan McGowan's limping off the field. He is such a big player for Maine. Such a great player. And he's going out right now. He, he was out last week, and he is gimpy out, heading to the main training staff right now. That will bring in the bias, I believe. Usually. There's Chaz Williams with it again. We'll see who's subbing in. Chaz Williams out over the 45 to about the 46, 47 yard line. First quarter action all done. Tied 7-7 into the second period. They're looking now at the knee area, it looks like. He may just have popped that because he, he missed last week's game uh, with a knee. He's practiced the last two days, so he may just have to give that to him. Well, everybody wants to get excited, and they're jumping over, and Maine's coming quickly. That's going to go against the Bears. Here's a stat that does look good for the Black Bears, Walt. Maine's time of possession was 8 minutes and 35 seconds. GSU's was 625. Well now the defense. Five-yard penalty results in a first down. Marcus Williams. Had an average of 4.1 yards in the first period. MoMA on that one carry had six. Now for Georgia Southern, Austin had a 6.6 .6 average and Walden a 10-yard average. Myers a five-yard average. That is just where they go. That is exactly. Maine's not overly concerned about being offside. They've got to play aggressive defense. They've got to take chances and gamble. Sometimes they're going to go offside. Five yards won't worry them as much as being able to make a big play, pushing it high. Changed it on the line of scrimmage. They come outside again. Look at the speed. There's Myers coming down the near sideline, getting to the 36-yard line. It shows your speed because Cooper had an angle on him and couldn't catch it. And you're going to see Cooper coming in from the bottom left of the screen. Walton has Cooper right there. It's a foot race. Couldn't catch him. And Cooper's playing on a little bit of a, a bad ankle right now you know that he, he missed uh, two or three games with an ankle he doesn't have his great quickness that he normally has he's back just a little bit he's about 90 percent gonna be the first down Austin carries well I'd like to remind you when the winter storm comes your way in eastern and central Maine you can tune to WABI TV 5 morning news for storm watch you can also watch and access the information on the internet with Stormwatch online, exclusively available at www.wabitv.tv. 
Brennan McGowan is back in the game. I thought he might have just tweaked that knee a little bit. He's back in action again, which will be a big lift for the Bears. He's a number two tackler on the team. Great speed. Second down five. Looks like that was a fake up the middle with Williams keeping. He was trying to drive the ball into Austin. Kept it on his own number. In on the stop for the Black Bears again is Cusano. The people that are hurting the Bears are the, wing, the slot backs or the wing backs. They're hurting them on, on the big plays. Georgia Southern has great third down conversion numbers. And they're into a third down and about three yards. Their, their third and fourth down conversion numbers are very, very good. So they're down in good territory at the main 29 yard line. Tied up 7-7 for the third down at about three yards to go for Chaz Williams. Uh, it's going to be going to be an audible call of the call and timeout. What? Maybe a penalty against them. I, I, it looked like some movement, and Maine was yeah. signaling. Oh, foul, false start. Yeah. Offensive. Line. The offense five-yard penalty. Remains third down. So that balances itself off with Maine jumping up there, faking the blitz or faking the the real rapid charge. They're going to draw some offside movement, and that's what happened. So Cooper was offside one time. It neutralized it back to five yards the other way this time. Well, it certainly gives Chaz Williams a little bit different look now, but they gallop. Remember, when they scored, they had about 17 yards to go for first down, so look for them wide. Here's Chaz Williams up underneath center. He never goes shotgun, almost always up underneath center. They're going to change it, just change the play. Went back, they're coming this way outside again. Yep. We thought, man, Maine read it well. Quickly, Myers is nailed as Cooper. he comes up, and Cooper right on him again. Sure open field tackle. That's going to put them into a field goal situation, probably. Unless they're going to... They have great confidence in their offense. Oh, they sure do. Now they, here he comes. Well, he's missed one. Sheldon is 10 for 15 in field goals, as long as it's 51 this year. This time, a little bit of a tail and not much. A little crosswind, maybe, at that. Maine has done a great job defensively. They've, they let a couple of plays go outside, but they have no. certainly done a good no, job gonna, of the he's, option. He's just going to punt it. He's just going to stand there and punt it. He's not going to mess, but he's going to try to kick Maine down in deep, and he's excellent at doing this. Maine's fair catching it down around the 10-yard line. That's Jira, uh, Jared Gomes. All right, 10.41 to go here in the first half. The Bears have tied it up. It is 7-7. We're coming back. Stay tuned. I'd like to remind you, you're watching the NCAA Championship Division 1 AA football, the quarterfinal game. Maine and Georgia Southern, Channel 5, Bangor, Channel 8, Press Carl, ABC 8 in Portland. Glad to have the statewide network going for you this afternoon. Back up on a fit. Right up the middle is going to come Marcus again. Marcus Williams after about the 15-yard line. Maine went down 7-0 in case you missed the early going, and they came back and scored through the air. Tying it up here at 7-7. Seven seven. Maine's trying to do is just control that ball with a big running up front. The tackles, Hammond number 74 and Lerner number, Lena number 73. They're big men in there. They're trying to control the smaller defensive linemen. They're quick defensive linemen, but Maine's line is quick. So it's a matter of controlling the front. You're not going to bust many big ones, but if they can just grind out first down, that's what they want is second and five. Give them five on one play, that's what they want. Got Marcus on the toss, he cuts back up inside again. Gang tackle down around the 20 yard line. Well, they're all over him. Somewhere down at the bottom of that is Marcus Williams. And we're going to enjoy him for a couple of more years. And they recruited him where they would love to recruit him. Coming into the game, George, he had almost 1,300 yards, and that's, uh, that's big. They stole him out of Amherst, Massachusetts. His mother's a dean at Amherst. Amherst College, UMass. Didn't you, miss him, he just came to Maine. Well, they met, Maine just out-recruited him. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to have to measure here to see if it's a first down. It's at the 22-yard line. Again, for those of you who wondered about the weather coming down, Maine got a break here when there's kind of a, it's a first down, kind of a cold snap for these people. They were complaining because it was under 60. Uh, with a slight breeze blowing. But that, that is really what Maine wanted. They did not want to come into a 75, 80 degree situation having been inside the field house all week because they couldn't go outside. So this is going to help, especially if that defense is out there a long period of time. It was 
in the 50s, and it is in it. It's forecast to go to 58 here today in the Savannah Statesboro area. Play action. He's going deep again. And if McMahon again, there was still more collision down there. And they ruled it uncatchable. Aaron Whitaker giving him one on one coverage. And they rule that collision is incidental, uncatchable ball. <laughs> Waldo, you can give an opinion if you want. Oh, I'll tell you. That these fans know their football. There's a long ball out, and then they had a little collision down there, but it's incidental contact, George. That's all that is. Don't worry about it. Broken leg is incidental. Right. That's, that's, that's way overthrown. Couldn't catch a ball. Next time you fall off the ladder, I'm going to remind you. <laughs> all right, Maine right now has got a second down and 10. They'll go trips to the right side. Come back with uh, the motion. And it was all to set up markers, and they're all over him. They're waiting there, mate. Much like Maine knows that uh, their quarterback's going to carry it a lot of the time, they know that Marcus is coming a lot, and they, they've got two or three guys assigned to Williams every time he's got the ball. We're not fooling him at all doing that. And what Williams tried to do that time was bounce outside, which is a good move. He put the bounce outside, he made a big effort on it, and uh, they had big pursuit from the Eagles on the backside. Uh, Harrison came in and made the hit. Here's that third down conversion problem again. The Black Bears need to pick one up here. Timeout. And Maynard's going to call some time. I think it'll get a good play in here and see if they can get it. All right. Here in Georgia, we're enjoying the sunshine and enjoying a football game. 7 7 tie. Back in a moment. All right, Maine coming out on the big third down nine. Fairly deep in their own territory. And let's see what they send in from the bench. Well, dropped up in there. He's in trouble. Gets out of it for a moment, but they're all over him. Maine's going to punt. One of the great things about the holidays is food anytime. For some great holiday treats with a local flavor, check out Todd's Recipes with Todd Simcox. Todd's Recipes here on Friday on the TV5 Morning News. And that's good news in the holidays, but the bad news is Maine's got a player down again. It's Mark Lehner. He has a knee, a left knee. He's had a knee problem. He's missed a couple of games. Uh, there's a true freshman will come in, number 72, Ryan Bird, that will fill in for him. The big kid, sophomore, 270 pounds, and he is an outstanding lineman. He's been one of the steadfast. That offensive line has been immense all year long. Uh, Ryan Bird has had an opportunity to start a couple of games and fill in and hit coming out onto the field. You'll see a couple of players to uh, help Lehner off the field. Paul Kalina, Maine's trainer, is working with him right there. Mark is from Virginia. He's in pain. You can see yeah, that expression on his face. Those knees hurt. And he's had, uh, there's a Mark Watson. Number 64 helping him off. And 71, Billy Rock, Rock of Portland with him. But Leonard's going to walk off on his own, which is great. That's great news. Maybe he can get some tape and come back. Mello is going to punt it. All right, we'll take a look here at how he gets. You look at the upper right-hand corner, lower right. You'll see his knee folding right there. Somebody All rolled right. up on the, so typical, yeah. rolled up on the back of the knee. Right. Mello kicking for Maine. His average is 36.4. His longest kick this year has been 58 yards. And he needs to kick it deep, as deep as he can, because waiting back there is a tough customer. And he's chasing that ball toward the sidelines. It's picked up over by Williams. And immediately brought down. Dre Arrington. Dre Arrington, number 36. Played for former Jamal Williams and a great player at Maine from East Orange, New Jersey. Well, listen, anytime you can get hang time and take it away from the ant, you're doing a great job because this kid flies down the field. He's one of the best in the country at doing that. He gave him good hang time, and he gave that kid a chance to come down and make an instant hit. Arrington's been getting stronger each week. He's great on special teams. He's been filling in some at, at the defensive secondary spot. Great future for that main black bear, number 36, Dre Arrington. Bears doing a great job. They're tied 7-7. Up the middle, we go to Austin, and they're reading that middle pretty well right now. Brian Mann coming in, making the hit from the defensive end spot. They're going to push a lot of pressure on the defensive ends, moving in tight, trying to hit the mesh, and he is assigned to the fullback. The defensive ends will be assigned to the fullback. 1987, Maine lost here, 31-28. They missed a field goal. 
in the overtime. And uh, then Foley kicked a field goal and beat me. At the point of attack, Maine hits Austin almost with what you like to call maybe the mesh point uh, uh, of coach. And uh, he got away with it a little bit, picked up a yard or two. But Maine is starting to dominate a little bit in the middle of that. The middle of the line. Now, what they've been hurt with is outside. So now be careful of the outside play or that sneak pass down the curve, down the middle. And that's going to be up to Dave Casano, number 17, a free safety to cover that pass if it's a go to a slot back. It'll be a third down. They're going to come to the corner, and they're going to get it. It's the outside play again. It's a toss outside that's killing them. That's Myers, the fourth time. Everybody that's been hurt by this uh, club, and they've been hurting a lot of people this year, they get hurt on that type of play. Interestingly enough, Delaware beat them in the opening game of the year, and a club that really got <laughs> kind of used by the NCAA in the postseason, Walford beat them in here on this field, and that is not easy to do. Myers, six carries, 40 yards so far today. First down, they're in main territory at the 49-yard line. And that's the big fullback, Austin, again. Now, their backs, you might notice, I, I want to point out one thing to our television audience. Walden is 5'8", Austin is 5'7", Myers is 5'9". That's good enough, but look at how wide they are. 180, 180, 190, 200 pounds. I mean, they're very difficult guys to bring down while they're low to the ground, and they have great breakaway speed. Jermaine Austin, nine rushes and 49 yards today. The advantage they have, they like straight speed. They're not great zigging and zagging. They're better straight speed. Here comes Williams on the outside of the pitch again. Great pitch he makes to Kevin Davis, who's just checked into the ball game. Davis originally not in the two deep here, but he's in here very quickly. Yeah, he's on. He's the backup bus slot on the left side. And that's going to be a first down as they continue to gather up the yardage. If some of the stats you maybe as we don't like to overburden you with stats, but if you look at their yardage, uh, in rushing yards, they had 4,765 rushing yards this year. Their opponents, 1,600 yards. If that doesn't tell you anything, nothing else will. Now they're unbalanced to the left. And look at now, 132 to 50. There's Chaz Williams outside again. Pull down around the 25. He made three moves on that way on all the time looking check it. They, they love to run to the unbalanced side. The unbalanced, they'll take one of the tackles over. At that time, uh, 77 went over. Uh, Collins went over to the left side. If they come in the other way, they're going to bring in uh, O'Brien and bring him back. Now watch a move here. They're going to make a move inside. He'll take one. Fake Cassano down. Great running back. Villanova still ahead of Fordham, 10-3. They're into the third period now in Philadelphia. This is a free down right here. He's calling a timeout. He's going to call time. Miami, number one in the nation, leading Virginia Tech, 14 to nothing. All right, we are in Statesboro, Georgia, in this playoff in Maine's Tide, 7-7. We're coming back. Georgia Southern runs a double slot offense, double wing offense, and their slot backs, uh, Myers, Davis, Weldon, are killing Maine. Nine carries, 72 yards, and one touchdown. That's the combination of the three. They're taking the quarterback, Walter, as you said, out of it. They are having trouble at the corners. Second down. They don't do this often, but they do it well. It's bobble in the air. Intercept. That's going to be picked. That's going to be picked, and that's going to be picked off in the end zone Brent by McGowan. McGowan. He got hurt early, and he's back out there, and Maine stops him in the end zone, number 11. That's uh, a terrific kid by the name of McGowan out of Jersey City, New Jersey. One of the things that you're looking for, not a great throwing quarterback. He, he doesn't throw as well as some of the quarterbacks Maine has faced. They get it by lulling you to sleep. That time, Maine was wide awake, made the big play, good pick inside. Ball was thrown low. Underthrown. McGowan did not play last week against App State. He went out a little banged up here, so Maine continues to have a strong defensive effort. And Muzawa will bring his team out to the 20 yard line. Right. They're going to change up again, and Momar's back in there, cutting back up toward the 25 yard line. Now, 
Williams will get a rest on this series, and only Moma, the sophomore, will be in there. Georgia Southern this year, seven touchdown passes all on the road, four interceptions, all of them occurring here in this field, which is kind of an interesting stat. Stokes is down for the Eagles, number 18. Strong safety, big strong safety, 6'2", 210 pounds. Got caught up in a wash that time. Stokes, or is that David Young? I'm sorry, David Young. David Young. David Young. Well, David Young is an All-American. He's, he, he's a strong safety. And he is a tough, tough customer. Big hitter. There's another young on the team. They're not related. No. One, the, the, but he's a great one, too. A young sophomore. A young sophomore. Young sophomore. Young. <laughs> These two uh, sophomores back. I mean, two uh, youngs. One at free safety and one at strong but safety. David, the kid that's down right now, is a preseason All-American. And he looks like he's hurting a little bit. One of the things we talked about early on in this game is Maine's physical size and ability. May, and he's going to be helped out, but he looks like he's getting a little bit better as he comes out. Physically, Maine not only matches with him, they're better physically than GSU. Different style of football altogether. And Maine will put the hurt on him at times. There's no question that Maine's playing one of the, pre, the premier, it's the premier 1AA football program in the nation. Maine's playing right now, and they're playing them eyeball to eyeball, and that's what it takes. Physical toughness, and Maine has it. They Maine. lack a little in speed, but they make it up in physical toughness. They bring the freshman McMahon back in and pull him out here to the left side. And Lomar will go in motion to the right side. It's going to be the quarterback coming up through Mazawak. It's up at the 30-yard line. Be very close to the first down. That's why he use those long legs on a 6-5 frame to jump over. And that's a design play. Design draw, picked up the first down. First down. Good call by Coach Wilder. Today you see David Young going over and get his leg checked out. you got to say right now, Coach, at this point in the ball game, on the road against this program, heading five minutes toward halftime. This is a great moment in Maine football right now. They have done a tremendous job to get going here on this field this afternoon. Let's see what happens down the road. Moma breaks right side guard and gets out to about the 35. And you want to give a lot of credit to John Mesenwa. Again, third string quarterback. Did not take a snap all year long. Starts the last two games, wins them both. He's thrown a touchdown pass here. He's uh, four passes, uh, eight passes, four completions. Doing a wonderful job. Not trying to do it by himself. Letting those linemen block. Let the backs carry the ball. Keep it in. Don't gamble. Moma is a tough runner. He, he gets a lot of leg action. He's pounding. He's a 227 pounder. Real great agility and balance. Second down. As a lot going down. Sideline. It's in and out. Broken up. The far sideline. It was in and out of Piera's hand. Looked like he got tipped at the last second. And coming on to make the tip was Derek Butler, the linebacker. Yeah, I think Butler slid his hand in the way the ball flew out. Either that or it hit Piera on the hip. And fly out like that. Maine has gone third down at seven again. And he yeah. just gave him a little shoulder. Nice, nice defensive move. Now it's third down and seven. Big third down play for the Bears. Again, you win football games on third and fourth down conversions, and the Bears need one right now. That's why steps up in trouble. Rolls on it, now he drops it a little low. It looked like he was heading for the right side over to uh, Jel Semino, the fullback. And if you see it again, it looked to me like it was thrown a little bit low. Yeah, it was thrown low and uh, a little bit behind Jelly. Jel Semino was trying to make the catch. You'll see it delivered. He's does a good job here, chases out, good protection up front, gives him time, pressure. It's a little bit behind him, and behind him is a hard ball. Once you're in the slide, it's impossible to reach back and make a play like that. Mello kicking from the 20-yard line. And good snap by Rob Brooks. Oh, now you get good hang time again. Back there is Williams. Fair catch. Yeah, at the 20-yard line. Great kick by Mello. He's and, keeping him back. And Rob Brooks from Sydney, number 59 from Maine, had a beautiful snap. Get it back, good time right on the hip where it should be. Navy leading Army 28-6 to this afternoon, the second period. Villanova up on Fordham, 10-3. Virginia Tech trailing Miami, 14 to nothing. Cincinnati beating up, and they have now beaten East Carolina, 42-26 at the earlier final. And Maine and Georgia Southern all tied here, 7-7 this afternoon. 
Paulson Stadium, Glen Bryant Field, Statesboro, Georgia. Hope you're enjoying it. Whistles are blowing long before the snap, so we'll see what's going on. It's going to be five yards against the Eagles. Well, the Black by five. Pump and press and false start. By the offense, five-yard penalty remains first down. One thing about Georgia Southern, the Eagles have more wins, that's 52 wins, than any NCAA team, 1A or 1AA in the country. In the past four years. In the past four years. They've averaged 14 games per year. And they, remember, the last year it's been 11 games, that's what you allowed, so they've been in postseason so many times, they average 14 games per year. Since the stadium was built, they've won 281 games here. It's a great program. It goes out to Austin. Austin's flying out of the 25, out to about the 26, 7 yard line. Picked up a lot of that penalty back. And they're going to be in good shape here with four minutes to go, but a player is down. I believe it's Dodds, a defensive tackle for Maine. Freshman, two freshmen. So the hitting is hard on this field. You notice on TV that it's not very green. Well, the field is not very green. There's a very sandy soil here. They keep it very short. This is a speed track. And the brownishness is very typical of some southern fields. And Maine has the training crew coming out on the field right now with 4.12 to go here in the first half. And could be a hopefully a wind knocked out of him type problem. Uh, it might be. Yeah, it is. I believe it's. Well, they're looking at his legs. I believe it's Dodge out of Berwick, Maine. True freshman. He's been in big asset outstanding game against Richmond has been big in the playoff he's just been an outstanding force good quickness good size if that's who it is team flew in by charter yesterday if you're wondering how they got down out of Miami based flight they brought they see a lot of main fans here on the flight they brought a plane in from Miami and they got it into Bangor it wouldn't start it was <laughs> finally came on and said it's too cold and they had to bring out some auxiliary stuff at the jump started <laughs> <laughs> Walter went out to his car, found a couple of uh, booster, cables, booster cables, and wanted to jump start the jet. The pilot said, we're based in Miami. We're not used to this. They're waiting for us at the Savannah Airport, and uh, main team should be back at about 10 o'clock tonight on the charter. And I tell you, in, in the way you fly around the country today, what a way to go. Certainly made for an easy trip. John Rhodes drove all the way up from Westfield, Mass., to come down with us. Uh, Manchwheel, a lot of the loyal fans on that plane, and... Uh, a lot of the players' families came down. Either drove down. Uh, oh, it's a tremendous crew here. You know, it was, it was a great memory lane. I met a lot of guys I hadn't seen in a long period of time. We talked about the old days. And, of course, we saw Mr. Swinson last night. Matt Swinson, big number 88. He's a middle school teacher in Long Island. I wouldn't argue with that man. He is still very, very big. You remember some names I'll throw at you here while we're waiting. Sergio Hebra. Well, back in 1987, he caught a 23-yard pass from a guy named Mike Buck. Maine came in here with a quarterback who ended up in the National Football League. They lost the game, but Maine led that game 28-10 to 10 at halftime. They're going to have to help him off as he goes out. The crowd responds very nice. We had a, we had a kicker by Boyerstep that year, too. Nice kid. But right now, here's the injury. It's one of the things you want to look for. The... Uh, Eagles offensive line, they don't block high. A lot of it's cut blocking, and that was a cut block right there. It's a, it's a dangerous block. It's a legal block, no question about don't it. But the thing is, defensive linemen and linebackers have to protect the knees because of this. George, another thing. I remember when we first put the Astro turf in at Maine, people said about injuries. We've had more injuries today here than we've had in three years on a Maine Astro turf. There's a late pitch coming yeah. out to the outside again. Boy, they run that well. That's Walden. Defensive corner is getting driven back on this. They need to come up. Garee has to come up and make the hit on this. Again, they run a wide open running attack. They run the ball 88% of the time, although they have thrown the ball in the air a deeper couple of times here today. And that's their bread and butter out of the double slot formation or the double wing formation. That sets them up, and they're they're not cutting. They're running straight forward down the boundary line when they get over there. They're driving the corner off by releasing the wing back down the field. Here it comes the other way. Same Notice play. The same play. Austin again. A gallop to the 46-yard line. Another first down. They're just chewing it up now outside. And Maine's going to have to be more aggressive with the corners, bringing them in. Corners are going to be focusing. They have to read pass or run. That's what's holding them out of there. Cassano's trying to, whoop, he overran it. Had to make the tackle inside. That's one of the problems for the defenders. They do overrun, and you can't help but do it sometimes. 
they may have to change up and put the Cooper in on the quarterback and let somebody else uh, let let the pitch double up on the pitch right now to shut that down. 46 yard line, first down. There's Austin. He runs right into Cusano, but he gets plenty of yardage. He's, he's a sprinter coming off the blocks, and he's got five yards before you can blink. All they're looking for is straight ahead speed. Get it outside, turn it loose. A lot of these kids are track kids, and that's what they're not just like uh, Florida a and used to run. They wanted super highways, get them running north and south, and this is the style offense you're looking at. Inside of three minutes, main tied 7-7 with Georgia Southern. And Austin tripped up. No, he pitched it late. Outside it goes. Fake up the middle. Walden. Great fake by Jazz Williams, the quarterback. Faked it on the belly up the middle to Austin. Pitched it out to Walden. Walden picks up the first down. 22. Walden, 5'8". Little guy, 176 pounds. There's the pitch. It's a long pitch out there. That's about an 8 to 10 yard pitch. The Reed comes up and makes the hit, but not after they've made another first down. And they have plenty of time with 2.35 to go. They're driving down inside the 30-yard line now. Main needs to force a fumble or throw him for a loss because they're going to get it over and over again the same. Austin, a great leg drive. Inside the 30. Austin is a great performer. He's 5'7", 200 pounds. This kid is a red shirt freshman. The player of the year for the Southern Conference is the offensive center, Clark. So you want to keep an eye on him, 74. The defensive player of the year for the A-10 Conference is number four, Cooper for Maine. So you have two superstars playing. Austin averages 5.8 yards every time he touches the ball, and he's doing it right now. Counter and a pitch outside to Walden. Look at him fly. Cuts back down to the 10-yard line. Maine is going to have to change that play up. They're going to have to send maybe either Curry out wide to take the pitch. They're going to have to do something to stop that pitch. He's going to take a real hesitation. And there it is, and it's, it's speed inside and the angle. Back defensive uh, players have to take a little deeper angle, and we have to hit the corners coming up to make the hit. All right, get blocked. You notice number two getting shot down on the ground. Gary is down. He has to come up and make that play. Five plays, 22 yards. Uh, five carries, 50 yards. I'll give you that stand again. I think that's right. Five plays for him and 55 yards of offense. My man Rick is working his, his magic here for me up in the booth. David Young, who was hurt earlier for the Eagles, is walking up and down the sidelines, stretching his leg out, number 18. Second down, and, but they're down now to the main six-yard line. Second down, two yards to go. Going to be a timeout for the Bears. The Bears need to call it a little bit here and get ready as we're heading for halftime with a minute and eight seconds to go. It's very, very difficult to keep them from getting yardage. The thing you want to do is keep them out of your end zone. And once they get in the red zone, they have a very, very high percentage rate, particularly by Chaz Williams, the quarterback, who carries it about 90% of the time. And the fans are in it here now. Maine had a big defensive stance in the first period when they fumbled down in here and uh, uh, Georgia Southern picked the ball up down in tight inside the 10-yard line. They held them to a field goal attempt, which was no good. So they're saying here, pressure on them. All you have to do is stop them right here, force them to a field goal, and there'd be a big feather in the Maine Bears' hat if they can handle that. Georgia Southern is a school about the size of Maine, maybe a little bit bigger. I think around 13,000 13, here maybe. Up to 15 now. Well, that is a little bit bigger than Maine. It's Maine up around 11. Paul? Yes. It, 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 big thing here, too, the recruiting area. Oh. Large percentage of players come within 50 miles of this school, their homes are. So it's an easy recruit bringing them in here. And they have a lot of big football teams down here. But you notice they get the smaller backs that can just flat out fly. That a lot of the big schools don't. They want a bigger back and they pick up and these number two. And the high school games draw 10 to 12, 14,000 people. They had a big one here last night. Here's the guy I told you about. He pitches late though and he hit Austin Austin's in the end zone. What a play by Williams. Chaz Williams is going to take it on his own. Great athleticism. Went to his left side. Saw that he was not going to make it. Austin was coming down the left sideline and he flipped the ball to him for the touchdown. It's a great play by Chaz Williams. 
Certainly a very athletic move. You'll see it here. Just follow the quarterback, number 10, down, and look at the length of the pitch. That's an unbelievable. The main is to pick one of those off, take it the other way. That's what they're going to have to do, get that long pitch. Here it is you Look at the distance. There he starts up, draws the defense in, sets up the back, and there goes Austin in. Scott for Sheldon six. up and good. So the Bears are going to be down 14-7 after a holding Georgia Southern even here through the first half. Nine plays, 78 yards, three minutes and 21 seconds on the drive. Austin on a seven-yard run after a great move by Chaz Williams, the 5'10 sophomore. You're going to deal with Williams next year. You're going to deal with Austin next year. <laughs> and they got a whole bunch of guys in reserve. You know, they've got a quarterback here by the name of Trey Hunter who could start for a lot of teams. But he was just beaten out by, by Williams. In fact, coming into the season, they didn't know which guy was going to be the, the guy they were going to run. And because of his great athleticism, which you saw in that play, Williams got the call. Remember, Maine's offensive unit on the field now. There's only one senior on that offensive unit for the Bears. So the Bears are very young. They only have seven seniors. Jel Semino was the only with Eaton out of the lineup. And here's the play again. Watch the great move inside. There's the fake. Now jump no. pass. Almost oh. picked off by Casada. Juan Casada get his hand on that and take it the other way. That's what he was trying to do. He had a big paw up in the air, but he wouldn't quite come into it. But Austin was right there. And so the Bears are down 14 to 7 on a very exciting first half of this quarterfinal playoff here in Statesboro, Georgia, this afternoon across our network and station tonight. Hope that you'll hang in here because the halftime will be coming up. Some stations will be seeing. Uh, the halftime out of here, some stations doing their own, but whatever, we're going to be here for that great halftime and then second half action. Main coming back with it now. Montel still on his feet. Back around the 15-yard line. Trying to run it hard. I believe he got it out to about 18 yards. That's Montel Owens. So the Bears have 56 seconds for John Mezawar to do a little magic here. But I tell you, I still maintain, even though they're down 14 to 7, if you look at Georgia Southern, they've been a great second quarter team. They scored 20 points last week against Bethune Cookman here in the second period. So the Black Bears have held them down in the second period, outplayed them in spots, and are at worst probably going into the locker room no worse than 14 7. That's not bad when you're on the road. The thing Maine doesn't want to do here is reach. Stay into it. Don't get yourself in trouble and give up another easy one before half end. That's smart. Hang on to the ball. That's it. Williams outside. Look at him go. He's being chased out of bounds. Now they can open it up. At about the 43-yard line. Now they can open up a little bit more. Big run. Marcus Williams, the sophomore, answers and comes right back. Now Maine is up where they could get a little more room to operate. There's 49 seconds left on the clock. Williams really has excellent speed for a big man. Remember, he's weighing just under 230 pounds, packed on a 5'10 frame. Main basketball at Clemson this afternoon. Main women got a victory, I believe, against Akron last night. The main hockey team defeating BC on the road. Not bad. They're great this year. Well, it's a big sports weekend. Main trading 14 to 7 in this playoff game. Looking for Williams to go right side. Main into his own blocker. And he had a lot of a lot of people throwing a couple of extra shots over there. And we have a little scrum going on, and the officials break those uniforms up very quickly. Clock down to 30 seconds. And the Black Bears have a second down now and 10 yards to go. They're using a lot of time right now. Call an audible right on the line. On John Mesawar is taking the deep drop. Found Pereira at the far sideline. That'll be a first down. That'll take it down to the 46-yard line. That'll stop. That'll stop the clock. But it'll be started immediately once the ball has been spotted. Maine has one timeout remaining. He's nice ball delivered right on it. Good catch. He's going to spike it. Yeah. So Maine uses that final timeout, taking the clock down to eight seconds here. And they're going to have to play Hail Mary here pretty quick. He is strong. Mezzo has a strong arm. He can reach it out there. You never know. You've seen so many big games lately decided on a pass like this just for halftime or at the end of the game. Five for 13, 66 yards, the one touchdown. Great he, uh, 
hit two drops. One, catch, one, one yeah. fumbled, one yeah. fumbled, of course, and, and then one drop. All right, this may be the final play, Mesovar. With the spread, and now we've got some whistles coming. Second down. He's fit. He's uh, they hit the wrong down marker up. Okay. Oh, we're down south. Maybe they're going to put third up there. Who knows? Maybe, maybe these Eagles are after us here, Rick. All right, Maine spreads it out, trips to the left side. Mezzawar is going to take the deep drop. That line gives him time. He airs it out. Sidelines. It's incomplete. They're going to another playoff that was intended for Pereira at the far sideline. Well, that wasn't a bad play by Maine. What they tried to do is get that ball down in there around the 30 yard line so that they could then kick, go to the end zone. Go, well, or kick the field goal. Yeah, which wouldn't be a bad option yeah. either with Mello. Mello had, had leg enough to do it. That's too bad because now it used it up on him. Used up the time. Now oh. you. Now Main. Well, how do they get another time? <laughs> the scoreboard was wrong. They had, had one up before. Main called timeout and they have one up again. Now Main calls another timeout, so maybe they gave us one. They're going to run a special play this time. You know what it's going to be. It's going to be bombed down to the end zone and see what can happen. It's going to be put that thing up and the defense going back and free man. If Piero could have held on to that ball, then it would definitely have been an opportunity to kick the field goal because it would have been a 40. I remember one year when I was uh, doing your games, well, you threw the ball one year. I, I'm not sure what, what year was that you threw the ball. I forget. That was at halftime, Josh. So <laughs> <laughs> Incidentally, on field goals, who's the first the one was a spike, <laughs> and not it was not charged. And that's how this whole thing comes up. Who has the longest field goal? Who's the kicker for Maine that has the longest field goal? Well, I'm not in my book, but I'm remembering Jack Leggett. Jack Leggett, the baseball coach over at Clemson, he was on the main sidelines last weekend. Players are very impressed with Jack Leggett. <laughs> he almost there. got Maine a 15 yard <laughs> penalty. What do you mean they're impressed? The official came over and told Leggett to shut up or get out. Leggett had the coaching pass, and he was down at the five-yard line. All right, we have trips to the left side. John Mezzovar, the sophomore, is going to air this thing out. The Bears are going to try to get one into the end zone. He's got some time. He airs it out toward the end zone. That ball is intercepted in the end zone. That's picked up by Whitaker, Aaron Whitaker, in the end zone to end the half. Well, he got it in there. Well thrown ball. He got it in there. Gave him an opportunity to make the play. Well, we have had an exciting time here in Statesboro, Georgia, for the first half, and it's not over yet. Now the coach, Seabock, is showing the official a little bit. I don't know what he's upset about. But we are going to be back here and do a lot of halftime, either here, but Tim is going to be down on the field here in a moment, so we'll hold it right here and try to catch up with the coaching staff. And then we'll head for our first break here to our station. So long. All right, here's uh, Tim downstairs. Thanks very much, George. Uh, Jack, you said uh, coming into this game that uh, you didn't mind bending a little bit, but did you bend a little bit too much this game uh, so far in the first half, although well, you haven't had a lot of big, long touchdowns? No, we're, uh, you know, it's, uh, we're seven points down. We've been in this place plenty of times before, so you know, we're going to go in and get some things corrected. You know, We did do a nice job early on the fullback. They found a way now on the outside. We'll get some things talked, discuss some schemes going defensively to slow them down. There's a tremendous amount of you know, options they have in their attack, so we just we got to get that one cleaned up, and we will. And they forced you into a lot of passing situations as well. Well, you know, but we got some cracks in there, too, on against them. We're going to keep pounding at them. We're going to be patient. We're going to keep doing the things that got us this point. Two good second half teams. Good luck in the second half, Jack. Jack Cosgrove. It's down by seven for the Black Bears. They've got some talking to do. We have too, as uh, halftime is coming up in just a moment. Back to Paulson Stadium in Georgia right after this. Welcome back to Statesboro, Georgia, as the Black Bears have some work to do. Georgia Southern Eagles leading 14-7, getting ready for the second half kickoff by John Mello. Let's go back upstairs to George Hale and Walt Abbott. All right, Tim, thank you very much. Everybody settling in here for the second half. We had some exciting things going on in that first half. In the press box, they were discussing uh, how well Maine has shut down that scoring attack. We got the kickoff coming, though, right now, so... We're not going to get those highlights in. Let's go for the kickoff. A booming kickoff by Mello that's going to sail all the way into the end zone, be downed in the end zone. Well, that's a great kick. He had tremendous height on that job, uh, George, his distance as well. 
Quickly, for those who are just joining us, Zareem Walden. All right, let's go to the stats. First downs, well, there it is, 14 to 8. But look at the rushing yards. They're a 400-yard team, and they got 225 against Maine in the first half. Maine got only 85. Passing yards, Maine a little bit better, 66-40. Total yards, 265 to 151. Maine did have the two turnovers. Time of possession is really a good thing for Maine. About 14 minutes against 16 is not bad at all. Now a little confusion in trying to run the counter there is Williams. He's going to be decked as we get the play go. One thing I want to point out is Zareem Walden's 23-yard run that Kevin McMahon scores for Maine. Some Maine fans are questioning whether Jermaine Austin on the 7-yard run might have gotten a forward lateral. What do you think, Walden? Well, I'd have to say it, it was close. And, and, it, and, it, and again, we're going to have to take a look at it later on the film. But right now, it's, we've got, Maine has got to get it fired up here. And the change is going to be that they're going to try to shut down Austin quickly and take away the outside. Coach Cosgrove and his staff, especially the defensive staff, went in at halftime and they were getting hurt on the outside. That's the number one stop they're going to have to make. They've changed up the defense. will help you pick up what they've done in a minute. Well, they've just picked uh, Williams up twice here. I'd like to welcome back to folks at ABC 8, WMTW, back with us here on the telecast. WHEM up north. Having a wonderful time. Basketball season's underway. Everybody's excited. Channel 8, Press Kyle. WABI TV, Channel 5, Van Gore. We're all at it. Timeout's going to be called by Wave. They don't like what Maine's doing in defense. They've been confused in the first two plays. And he called a timeout when he saw that set. We're looking for a great second half here. So stay tuned. We're coming right back. Well, normally you'd say a passing situation, third and ten at your own 20 in Georgia Southern's playbook, not necessarily, as they cannot double slot. Looks like he may be changing it at the line. Now they kept it on the ground, and they didn't get it. They went up the middle, Austin. He's not a great passer to begin with. He does air it out once in a while, and they just believe that they can beat you on the ground. So that's the reason I made the comment. I didn't really believe that they would throw it. And the big thing is here, three and out. Very seldom, again, they very seldom go three and out. That was a great stand. They turned the quarterback around twice. They put quick pressure on him early on so that he couldn't get the pitch to the outside. Gomes to get the kick. Take it in. No, he never touched it. He never touched it. That ball is loose. Down around the 40-yard line. It goes out of bounds. He pulled his hands back. That's a main ball. <laughs> you hope he didn't touch it. Uh, I know he didn't touch it. And Maine's going to have Maine's going to have the ball. It's a dangerous play. What he did. See, the ball is going up into the wind, so it's going to go away from the receiver. The, the receiver was waiting there. Jared Gomes was waiting, and then the ball was drifting back away. It's a very difficult ball to catch. Smart play on Jared Gomes. Junior defensive back. 14-7, Georgia Southern leading the Maine Black Bears. Maine has been a second-half team this year, so let's see how it goes as they get their first possession now in this third quarter. Marcus outside, gets a block. 15 sidelines, out of bounds at the 45. He's a tough customer. He picked up a first down for the Bears on their first possession of the third period. Maine's strength has been... And they came last week from behind, you remember, at App State. Now they're on the downhill side. They're going, they're over the 50. They're on the downhill side, putting it in the end zone. Good interview by his mother and father at halftime. She's a dean down at the University of Massachusetts. Said she loved, he loved the main coaches, but he really fell in love with the main players in the university. Maine's margin of victory, 27 to 14 this year. Georgia Southern's 36 to 13, so they're... Both able to put points up. Look at that rumble up the middle to the 39-yard line. And he's on fire now, Marcus Williams. And it's good to see number 73 back on the field. Laner, the big left tackle for Maine, 290-pounder. Maine's big across that front line. They're big and very athletic and very, they're excellent condition. Will Bemis, the same of the uh, strength coach, has done an outstanding job getting this team physically fit. The well, Maine felt they could handle them up front with their size. That great O-line that they've had all season long. 
In this first series of the third period, they are doing a pretty good job. Marcus Williams gets caught from behind. He didn't get the first down. Somebody penetrated very well. Looked like Mike Ward, the linebacker, again. Very close to offside, too, for the Eagles. Yeah, they came into the neutral zone very quickly. Ward broke through, and he's nowhere near a first down. We were right on the line of scrimmage here, and I, I thought there were a couple of helmets that could have been flagged on that one. Georgia Southern won the national championship, 85, 86, 89, 90, 99, and 2000. Big third down play for the Bears. This is I, I talked a lot about that in the first half, and that has been a problem for Maine this year, although they're probably in four-down country. They do it about a third of the time. They need to increase that against this team here today. This is gut check time now, George. It's time to suck it up and get after it. Here it comes outside. Coming on the pitch outside of Marcus. He's going to be very close to the first down. I think if they did decent spot, he'll have it. It's going to have to be a measurement, I would say. It's going to be very close. It is. Uh, Whitaker, the cornerbacker, and Joe nope. Scott, the linebacker. I, uh, thought he, I thought he made it. He did. They're moving the chains. First down for the Black Bears. And this this would be huge to be able to come out and put one on the board right now. First possession of the third period with the Bears trailing 14-7 with 11 17 left in this third period. An equipment problem on the cornerbacker, and, and they're going to bring him out and check him very, very, very quickly here. But uh, Whitaker goes out. Yeah, that's Whitaker, the cornerbacker. All right. The key thing for the Bears right now is to keep that offense on the field. They're down 14 to 7, but moving the ball very effectively after forcing Georgia Southern three and out. There goes Donnie Fusco, number 86, a big tight end in motion over on the other side. He's set, he's ready to go. Haven't called his name too much today. All out the big break to that's El Cimino. They run that big fullback up of behind the O-line into the 33-yard line. Main, Maine's playing smash mouth right now. They've got the big tight end in there. They had two big fullbacks in there. Zaskowski, he's leaving the field 46 right now, but he was in. Strongest man in the lakes on the team, Mike Zaskowski squatted over 600 pounds. That's like a pickup truck full of green yeah. lumber right on your back. I saw, I saw you talking to his dad this morning. <laughs> yeah. you, you were trying to get a second breakfast out of his father. <laughs> Maine doing a lot of shifting. They come, get a little dizzy here. I guess they're going to settle down into a straight eye. And they tried to open it. Here's Marcus to daylight. Down to the 20-yard line. Saving tackle by Jimmy Young. That's been Maine's trademark all year. Just beat him up and get after him. Now, without Jake Eaton in there to give the great passing attack that Jake had, Mezzoir's doing a wonderful job. He's staying in control, and you got to give Bob Wilder a lot of credit. Get the ball in 21's hands, let him do it, throw a pass now and then, and they're playing real fine football. Well, Eaton threw for 1,849 yards, and you've lost that coming into this game, or any game. Williams now 34 yards on this drive alone. Marcus is 34 yards and taking charge of the offense, trying to carry Maine on his back again. He's got the ball back, cuts right. Nice cut. They read it fairly decently. He made a tremendous cut. And coming on to make it is David Young. David Young made an excellent open field tackle. You take Williams down one on one. He hit him in a slight angle there rather than head on. David Young is that strong safety I told you about. He got banged a little bit in the game earlier. He's a preseason All-American. And it was it took his talent to stop Marcus that time because he made a great cut right. He's big. He's 210 pounds for a strong safety. 6'2". Big, tough, strong safety. All-American candidate. Second down, seven yards to go for the Black Bears. Trading by seven, but a solid drive for Maine here in this playoff game. Williams in motion. It's a new wrinkle Breaking down on a main delay a game. I believe it was the clock ran out. The yeah, clock him. ran out. He didn't get the youngster didn't get the, the play delay a game. What they had was it. What, what they had for a play was a design quarterback draw. They sent the tailback in motion that you see very seldom. And Mezzawal was going to come back like he was going to throw the ball and then hit a design draw up the middle. The play was opening up, but they just ran out of time. And you got to wonder whether Big Fusco is going to be involved in the end zone here sooner or later, too. And use his size. He's 6'5". Big tight end. They've used him before. And let's see. It's second down now and about 12 yards to go. And again, that motion with the Williams, which is a little bit of a wrinkle. And that's, well, it's almost the same play again, only goes outside. He's not fast enough. They're going to stretch it out. He's not going anywhere. They tried to come back with it, and they smell that one immediately. 
Large crowd on hand. Although not capacity here. Capacity is 18,000. They were anticipating 10 today. They actually, I'm a little surprised. They only drew seven last week. Maybe the students were away or something. But, uh, they're supposedly at 10 today. And if they get any further along the line, they might put the 18 in here. This is football country. Maine with a third down. Critical down, but they're, of course, in four down country unless they go field goal. So are looking. He is incomplete. No flag. Oh, He's looking. He's looking. Ronnie Abrams broke it up. It was intended for McMahon. So let's see if May decide to put it up in the air, and I think they will. Western Kentucky, Western Illinois tied 7-7 in the half. Marshall leading Toledo 7-0. That's a walk -up. Definitely re Called his name too much today. Oh, now the big break to that's Gelsimino. They run that big fullback up behind the O line into the 33 yard line. Maine's playing smash mouth right now. They've got the big tight end in there. They had two big fullbacks in there. Zaskowski, he's leaving the field 46 right now, but he was in. Strongest man in the lakes on the team, Mike Zaskowski. Squatted over 600 pounds. That's like a pickup truck full of green yeah. lumber right on your back. I saw, I saw you talking to his dad this morning. <laughs> yeah. You were trying to get a second breakfast out of his father. <laughs> Maine doing a lot of shifting. They come, get a little dizzy here. I guess they're going to settle down into a straight eye. And they tried to open it. Here's Marcus to daylight. Down to the 20 yard line. Saving tackle by Jimmy Young. That's been Maine's trademark all year. Just beat him up and get after him. Now, without Jake Eaton in there to give the great passing attack that Jake had, Mezzoir is doing a wonderful job. He's staying in control, and you got to give Bob Wilder a lot of credit. Get the ball in 21's hands, let him do it, throw a pass now and then, and they're playing real fine football. Well, Eaton threw for 1,849 yards, and you've lost that coming into this game, or any game. Williams now 34 yards on this drive alone. Marcus is 34 yards and taking charge of the offense, trying to carry Maine on his back again. He's got the ball back, cuts right. Nice cut. They read it fairly decently. He made a tremendous cut. And coming on to make it is David Young. David Young made an excellent open field tackle. You take Williams down one on one. He hit him in a slight angle there rather than head on. David Young is that strong safety I told you about. He got banged a little bit in the game earlier. He's a preseason All-American. And it was it took his talent to stop Marcus that time because he made a great cut right. And he's big. He's 210 pounds for a strong safety. 6'2". Big, tough, strong safety. All-American candidate. Second down, seven yards to go for the Black Bears. Trading by seven, but a solid drive for Maine here in this playoff game. Williams in motion. It's a new wrinkle Breaking down on a main delay again. I believe it was the clock ran out. The clock him. ran out. He didn't get the youngster didn't get the, the play to delay again. What they had was the it. What, what they had for a play was a design quarterback draw. They sent the tailback in motion that you see very seldom. And Mezzawal was going to come back like he was going to throw the ball and then hit a design draw up the middle. The play was opening up, but they just ran out of time. And you got to wonder whether Big Fusco is going to be involved in the end zone here sooner or later, too. And use his size. He's 6'5". Big tight end. They've used him before. And let's see. It's second down now and about 12 yards to go. And again, that motion with the Williams, which is a little bit of a wrinkle. And that's well, it's almost the same play again, only goes outside. He's not fast enough. They're going to stretch it out. He's not going anywhere. They tried to come back with it, and they smell that one immediately. Large crowd on hand, although not capacity here. Capacity is 18,000. They were anticipating 10 today. They actually, I'm a little surprised. They only drew seven last week. Maybe the students were away or something. But, uh, they're supposedly at 10 today, and if they get any further along the line, they might put the 18 in here. This is football country. Maine with a third down, critical down, but they're, of course, in four down country unless they go field goal. That's a wire looking. He is incomplete. No flag. Oh, He's looking. Oh. He's looking. Ronnie Abrams broke it up. It was intended for McMahon. So let's see if Maine decides to put it up in the air, and I think they will. Western Kentucky, 
Western Illinois tied 7-7 in the half. Marshall leading Toledo 7-0. Benson Walker definitely reach. Uh, it's a holder here, and uh, Mello can definitely reach from here. He's got a strong leg, a slight wind to his back. 41-yard field goal coming up for Mello. Good snap. Ball is up. Carrying, and it is wide right. No good. Oh, each team has missed one. However, that was a great offensive drive for the Maine Bears. It gave the defense a good rest. They gave them three and out last time. Maine's defense made that halftime adjustment. So let's take a look at how they're going to go after the quarterback and see if they can shut down the slot backs on the outside pitch. The crowd now into it a little bit. You're watching NCAA Championship Division I AA football, the quarterfinal round game between Maine and Georgia Southern on WABI TV 5 Bangor, WAGM 8 Presque Isle, ABC 8 WMTW Portland. Juan Casada making a play from behind. I'm impressed with what I've seen so far in this uh, second second half with Maine's defense. They're really putting the pressure on the quarterback. They're going to corral him, keep him inside the tackle zone. Black Bears more or less dominating the first five, six, seven minutes. We're down to seven minutes now. But they will throw the ball. They don't do it a lot, but they will throw the ball. They put Irby in there as a wide out. Here comes the late pitch, and Maine reading that well. And coming on to the near sideline is Myers, and Maine stretched that out nicely for the first time today. They really stretched the slot man out. Yeah, they've done a great job as far as forcing the pitch, and then they hit two people out on him that time. And that they must shut the corner down, or it's, it's going to be a tough thing for him. And Williams is putting the pressure on right now. It's third and six. Now, know, okay, Walter, I just got to note that Derek Owens, the reason I gave you the new receiver, their best receiver is out for the rest of the game. He is a knee problem. Yeah, I saw him on crutches on the sideline. All right, so that's the reason they have brought in subs, and Irby has come in as one of them. They'll bring some others in, too. Third down. They give it up to the fullback, Austin. Austin close to the first down. I'd say he's got it. Austin averages 5.8 yards a carry. He averages 95 yards a game. As a first down, he's gained 1,157 yards coming into this game. This kid is just, you know, you look at those slot backs that they have. And you've got to know the recruiting staff did a marvelous job here because Williams, the quarterback, is really a running back, averages 5.1, Austin 5.8, Myers averages almost 12, Walden averages 11, Anderson can get you about 16, although he doesn't work as much. Here's the quarterback, draw. Look at his moves, he slides at the 42-yard line, picks up about eight yards on it. That was designed. Chaz Williams took two steps back and then came forward on the draw. He was trying to look for his wing back down the field. He was well covered down there. Good pressure on the outside. Took the slide. Now it's second and seven. They are the Southern Conference champions, in case you're wondering where they came from. Southern Conference. But they have dominated the times. They don't get him the first time. You don't get him. There's Austin. They had him, lost him, and he bounced off and uh, went left side and picks up the first down. And so Jermaine Austin continues to move. Maine trailing here 14 to 7 with six minutes to go in the third period. Maine had a great scoring opportunity, but again, unable to convert on those critical third and fourth downs. And got into a field goal problem and uh, just a little wide right. Jermaine Austin, 18 rushes, 167 yards in the game. They come out and stretch it out a little bit and send the wing in motion. He's going to get a block coming around the near sideline. Look out. Gone. Myers. One man will say he won't go down. All the way down to the 25 yard line. Gomes had a hand on him. That's the bread and butter of the Eagles football team. Pitch wide and the block was coming from Zareem Walden coming to the near sideline. And they now go down into tough country as they're going to mark him down at the 25. As they get down toward the red zone, you're going to see Williams, Chaz Williams take over a lot on his own. Although Maine has done a good job on him today. He had excellent downfield block, and they got McGowan blocked out. 
Gave him a running lane back up inside, which he took advantage of. Main missed a tackle, and then he was off another 10 yards. Austin breaks outside. He's hit hard, but he did get some pretty good yardage as McGowan came up and submarine him. Main can't be concerned about letting them get a little yardage. What they need to do is make a big play, one big play, force them back because they are going to make yardage. There's no question about it. Made it on every team in the last 10 years since they've been here. The top rushing offense in the nation. They lead all one and one double A teams in rushing. 400 yards they average a game. Air Force is the second, and Air Force runs the same type offense. Wide open spread offense. There's the guy that will carry it more than anybody else in the red zone, Chaz Williams. He's down around the 20-yard line. He faked up in the middle to Austin, and but number 10 kept it. And Cooper met him face-to-face. -face. And you know who's going to win that battle. Face-to-face <laughs> -to -face with Cooper. Cooper was assigned the quarterback on that. Again, we talked about the assignments. Cooper, Cooper had the quarterback, and there it is. The rushing has improved for Maine, but it's still 287 to 124. Williams, nice tackle. Right up in the shoot. Dennis Dotton Carter. Yeah, Dennis, he was an all-conference player for Maine this year, all-conference defensive end. Started out as a linebacker, moved on to defensive tackle, hurt his shoulder in spring ball, so they moved him out to defensive end. It's been a great fit. A nice uh, article in the newspaper. They're going to go field goal because Maine has shut them down. So Maine, again, this kid can kick, but Maine has shut down the offense shut in the red zone. offense in the red zone, which is great. That kick is up long for 35 yards, and it is good to make it 17 to 7, but Maine probably happy to get away with that. Scott Sheldon kicks the field goal and we're at 354 to go in the third quarter we'll be back seventeen seven the black bears down by 10 10 plays 57 yards 54 yards on the screen three and minutes and 54 Sheldon 36 yard field goal officially over a couple of yards. High end over end kick. He's going to grab it. Owens, 15 20. Breaks outside. They've got good pursuit down to the 25 yard line. Coming up this month from TV5 News at 6, you can join Amy Erickson as she goes toy shopping for the holidays, tries to save a little money and get great gifts. Keith needs that. Plus, live from Antarctica, updates on the UMaine expedition to the South Pole. That's where we are almost near there. The main Bear fans want to take a good look at 33, Montel Owens. They're going to see a lot of him. He's a true freshman, great student, outstanding leader on campus, and he's going to be a truly superior player in the backfield for Maine. Will Maine go with Williams, or do they put Moma in there? They usually they sometimes alternate. But Williams was so hot on the last drive, and Marcus is back. As our throws underneath incomplete. Flag down. Flag. That, going to, he got in there a little early. And I think that it looks to me like David Young just got him a little early. Let's see if that's the call. Mezzobar forced upstairs maybe a little bit. The coaching staff trailing by 10. Jealous Amino is a big target, and it's hard to defend him like that coming from behind. Pass interference. Uh, that's what On it was. On the defense. First down, spot of the foul. The officials doing a good job here today. That wasn't a bad penalty. Uh, you know, it's only a, about a four-yard gain. But again, it moves the chain. Another first down for the Bears to keep them rolling. Time of possession for the Bears has been decent in this ballgame, something they wanted to do. But they need 10. They, they're in to the point of the game where they want to get a little tighter. Maine's got the two big fullbacks in the game right now. Looking for a power offense. Williams gets it, sticks his shoulders, squares up. He's a great running back. When he saw the contact coming, he squares up, drives it to the 38-yard line. One thing to follow in the game is watch the offensive lineman for Maine finish the blocks. That means they get the first block on the way to the second block. One of the great things that Coach Matt Griffin does with them in the offensive line is to talk second effort. And if you follow the Bears and the shirts out there, the white shirts, those interior linemen, you'll see them flying around after the first block. In second down. Five yards to go. Remember, there's only one senior on that offensive unit of 85. A 
as it was on his own number this time. Pretty strong. He's near the first down. Be a little short. Going to be third down. Now, Maine's been able to convert on these short yardage. They've been able to get the power unit in there, get some good pounding going. This is going to be third, four, going to be a first down. Mezawaz uses long body frame to reach out. Give him a first down, he got a good spot. He's done an excellent job on those uh, quarterback draws. He doesn't have great speed, but his leg strength and his toughness, he's just physically tough. He's not afraid to put his head in there and get after it. All right, it's first down for the Black Bears. Trailing by 10 late in the third period. This playoff game, they just played a very good football game. Considering some of their adversities, but they need to score. It's stuck quickly, and Williams is down. That's Freddie Wiesquistra. P e s q u e i r a. He's an All-American type. All, well, Buchanan Award winner, right? A candidate, Freddie Pescara, 6'1", 241 pound senior, and he's a really he's a handful. It's going to be second 10 for the Bears. You can see the pile up right there. Just stunned. And you're going to lose one of those now and then. Marcus Williams, 21 carries, 107 yards now. So he's having another brilliant afternoon for the Black Bears. He's coming up the gut again to the 45-yard line where it's going to be third down. Third and probably eight, looks like. This field in Statesboro, Georgia, if you've ever been down in Georgia, is about 40 miles from Savannah, and it's up I-16, and then you come over and you go through the cotton country. We had to pause a little bit because Walter Abbott got up and picked cotton. He said he did that in Rumford when he was a young boy, so we let Walter pick cotton today, and so Carol, he's bringing you home a whole bag of it. You can make a sheet out of it or something. The only thing they picked in Rumford was paper and lots of it. It looks oh. about the same. Oh, it looks the same. Oh, my good friends over in Rumford. Well, there he That's is. Right. He's got wide open field. Sticks his head down and not blessed with a great deal of speed. Didn't get to the first down. He gets to the 50-yard line, stopped by Derek Butler, the linebacker. Somebody's lost a helmet out there. <laughs> Who's ahead? He doesn't have great speed. Otherwise, he'd have that first down. Marshall over Toledo, 14 to nothing today. Navy beating up on Army, 58-13. Go Navy. I'm on, I'm on with that. Miami, 35-21 over Virginia Tech at the halftime. All right, Mello to punt. Nobody's back. They nope. Send a single guy back. No one's there. back deep. They're going to try to block it unless somebody jumps out of there quickly. Well, they're in a return. Nobody back. That ball's going to bounce around. That an interesting call by the coach back to the 15 yard line. Yeah, they didn't really try to put a big block on it either. We'll be back. Well, you need a big defensive stand. With five seconds to go, you're down here 17 to 7. If you ever needed three and out, this might be the point in the game where you want it. Straight up the gut. They're not, they're not ashamed to come up with a fullback up the middle. A small back, he certainly has a lot of leg drive and power. And it's just nothing fancy, nothing fancy in the blocking either. Okay, that's the end of the period. Got one play in. It's 17 to 7. The Eagles over the Bears. We've got another quarter to go, so hang in. We'll be right back. The Black Bears. Ten down. Second down, five yards to go. Again, playing very tough up inside the tackles. They've done an excellent job. They're as good as anybody in the country's done against this offense as they come back up with Austin. They don't throw the ball a lot. In fact, Williams coming into the game. Chaz had seven touchdowns up for the whole season. With 822 yards, he had only thrown it 79 times, only intercepted twice. It's a run offense, 88 to 90 percent run offense, but they can hit you through the air. They proved today they can hurt you at times. Now he reverses. He's in trouble. He bounces back out. Means still with him, and they're going to fumble the ball. And that could be the big break as the Black Bears 
He's, have picked it up. They're calling him, though. They're saying down. Oh, my goodness gracious. Kazada had the ball, and they're going to say down. In I want to see the replay on that one. I do, too. And Jack Cosgrove wants to see the replay, too. I have fears of it. Oh. I don't know. Claudia, Miss Claudia. Well, it's going to see it right here. Oh, he was, oh, oh, I think that was a little home cooking. That's grits. Like that's grits. <laughs> that's nothing but grits. Oh, that's home cooking. Oh, my goodness gracious, alive. High punt. Stay away from it. Stay away from that's it. Get poison. away. That hit a oh. main player, but it came back to me. It hit a main player. It bounced. Hit a main player. Now, no, now they're going to they're going to overrule him. Home cooking is continuing. It's going to go back to Georgia Southern. Robinson. D. Covered. Robinson. It goes back. When that ball is bouncing, get away from it as far as you can. It hit two players. One of the players, the second player, was Maine. That was a, you're going to see the ball come off uh, his back. Mo Gali's back, I believe it was, 25. And they get the ball at the 45-yard line. What one, a, one official went one way, one went the other. But what, uh, a turn, what a turn of advantage. Well, what a crime on the, and now look at Jack Cosgrove. He's hat off on the field, he's out of it. Now there's a flag on the far side, I don't know what it is. Oh, they're probably going to get Maine. Oh, they got yeah. Maine for bench, I'm sure. Look at Jack Cosgrove and look at Bobby Wilder. But they, Oh, that, I mean, that call against Maine below, down below, it's just, I know that, that that's, they're blowing their mind. The whole play should never have happened. Maine had the ball down at the 10. Back in 87, when Jack was a player, we had a call in here that he didn't like either. Um, breaks down, they never got the handoff to Austin. That's what they're trying to do, that penetration. An excellent halftime adjustment by the Bears defensively. They're putting inside pressure on the Ozancia a little bit wider, putting the pressure on the linebackers inside with Kirstead and number four, Cooper. I tell you, we've got a great director here, and I've loved working with him today, Skip Hill. Skip, don't ever lose that tape. <laughs> don't ever lose that piece of tape. We want to take it back home. There he goes. Austin Main reads it pretty well, knocks him down at the 40-yard line. Jack Cosgrove, I, I know Jack as well as I know anybody in coaching, and Bobby Wilder, when he's hot like that, he's, he's hot for a reason. Amos Hall checking in, getting some real quick with the defensive line. Amos, just don't be offside, my man, and get after him. He comes inside, he puts a lot of quick pressure on him. They're looking for speed inside to penetrate the gaps. There he is, jumping the gap again. Come outside, he's to leap, leap, there's the move. Down to the 20-yard line as they go to Walden. Here's that made the, a diving tackle on that one, number 40. Zareem Walden, a great outside speed. Very athletic move, watch him jump right over here. Good athletic move, right Lost. over the top. Yeah, great move. And there's Kirstead coming in. Desano was shutting him off over the top. 17-7, Maine thought they had the ball deep into G GSU territory, and then they had the ball bouncing around it midfield, and here we are with this tough attack coming at them now, getting to the red zone. Inside the 20-yard line, Jermaine Austin, the workhorse out of Darien. Can you believe a redshirt freshman? Quarterback for... GSU is a sophomore and a tailback or they refer to as a fullback and they went to a freshman. Uh, backup yeah. quarterback, Trey Hunter's a great quarterback, uh, I, my understanding is, and he's a sophomore. They have talent. He's two talented, two talented football teams out there. You can see on the screen right now, main uh, 143 rushing, 321 yeah. for the Eagles. Williams down to shoot when he gets toward the red zone. That's his number. He wants it all the time. And he doesn't kill you outside, Walter. He kills you inside. Likes to follow it right up the middle. He can kill you outside, George, but he loves to turn it in. And there's Chaz Williams picking up the first down and may have enough room to get a first down before the goal line. Looking to go up inside. Just guys chasing him. 
He's not, down. He's not going to make many cuts on it. He's going to hit it and go straight. And that's the, the only saving thing you have. If you get in front of him, you can get a shot out. All right, they're out double winger, double slot. And the man in motion. He's got his there own number. Same yeah. play. Same play. Same play the other way. 90% of the time, number 10, just follow him. He's taking it toward the end zone. When they get down inside the red zone, he's carried it more than any other player. Now, Maine may have to change up and go back now and squeeze the quarterback like they were squeezing him earlier and to give up a little bit on the outside. So difficult because the attack is so balanced. And Maine isn't the only team in the nation that's had a problem with it. Everybody they faced in the past 10 or 15 years has had trouble defending his offense. This time he does give it up, goes left side slant, but not in yet. Hall making the tackle of a 91 coming in with good quickness. Austin burrowing down to the three yard line. They can pick up, a, I don't know, I guess not. Third and goal, they indicated earlier that they might be able to pick up the first down at the goal line. I believe they can because they have the flag still up on yeah. the outside. I think they've got, I, I think they can, they've got inside the one they can pick up the first six, down. They go to six inch line, they'll get a first down. On his own, he's not in. Big play caught behind again. Kid that's reaching down and really calling on his number 40. Kirsten coming in behind, wrapping up the ankles, making a good play. There he is in the screen. Austin, 25 carries, 138 yards. Watch him come in from behind, 40. Kirsten right there. Hall coming in over the top, but Kirsten made the saving tackle from behind. Well, this is fourth down, and they can get a first down. This would be huge for me to stop after. They've had a couple of tough setbacks on this drive. Now he's going to call time. That's his second timeout. Gives him one left. Well, with time call, we're at a dramatic point of the ball game. Main trailing 17 to 7, and they're on the main goal line on fourth down. We're coming back. Hang on. Critical play coming up now. Fourth down, not goal. Fourth down, one from the one and a half. Maine is going to have to sell out defensively. They're going to have to try to, they're going to, have to stunt, penetration underneath. You know he was going and he's in, Jazz Williams. He went over, just about over left guard. A little delay action and then exploded with his great legs. I think that was the key to the, the, the delay. He, he broke uh, he gave it time. a second late. Gave it time, let the people pile up, and then he picked the slot and dove over. Scott Sheldon for the extra point. Shipped off to the right side. It's 23-7 now. There's some distance now between Georgia Southern and the Black Bears. Number 10 that you just saw score is the rushing leader for consecutive 100-yard games of any quarterback in 1AA history. Well, we have some distance to go, but there's some daylight now. We'll return. Stay tuned. We'll be back. Here we go. It's going to come back, and Maine will run it back from the five-yard line. Montel Owens to the 20, spins on his feet inside, over the 25, out to about the 28-yard line. So the daylight makes it 24 to 7 now, as that drive, which was very interesting, which took nine plays, 45 yards. The elapsed time, 4.15. Williams, the quarterback, two-yard rush over the left side, left guard. And the Black Bears now have got to do some work in a fairly large hurry here. And here's where you're going to have some problems trying to play catch-up. Maine's going to have to put the ball in the air. And this is going to get yourself in trouble without a real veteran quarterback in there. Mezzo has done an excellent job. Yes, he has. But it's a lot of pressure on him right now to bring this team back down this way and have to throw the ball in the play. He drops it off. There's Joe Semino, a big, burly guy out of the backfield to the 40-yard line. That was the first pass completed by either team in the second half. This has been a, as Walter likes to call it, a smash-mouth ground attack. It's the old-style football, three yards or ten yards in the cloud who does. Look at the great protection up front. Look at those big butts down, the shoulders up, arms out, and then you get the 250-pound fullback out in the flat picking up the first down. On a chilly afternoon in the 
Free Christmas rush down here in Statesboro, Georgia. The Bears are trying to pull some magic now. They got nine minutes to do it. Their young quarterback throwing it out long. And that's got to be a flag. That's got to be one called on that one. Yeah, there was a hey, hug. Ronnie Abrams was asking him for a date. He was hugging him all the way down the sideline. I thought he was trying to pick his pockets. He had both hands wrapped around him. That's Kevin McMahon who's been involved in one earlier on that. Goodness gracious. And the crowd's upset. <laughs> the crowd's up. <laughs> Crowd is upset here in Georgia. Look at the flags come out. Fourth of July down here. Pass interference by the defense. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. You know, you can't win with this crowd. <laughs> Not happy with that. I'd do like to be up a couple of touchdowns down here to have the officials <laughs> make a call like that. <laughs> hey, I did Tampa years <laughs> ago. I understand the whole oh, game. Oh, I was at that one. You know that. I was coaching back then. Yes, my, sir. my, my. <laughs> it can happen. All right, first down at the 44-yard line. That's a boy now. Looks to swing it out. Now he's got a man up. Pereira. It's an incomplete pass. That's not a fumble. He never had control. He had a man on his back, Stokes. And uh, it's a good defensive play by Stokes. He never had possession of the ball. Crowd yelling for fumble. That's an incomplete. Another excellent throw by Mezwar. Right in yeah. front. Let him right. Watch the delivery right there. Pushed it right in front of him. There it is. Catch the ball. Took his eye off. See him? Yeah. He took his eye off. Looked up at uh, Young. Number one, Young was looking right in the eye. And he had it. Head the ball. Second down for the Bears. A lot of time. 9.22 to go. But they need to put something in that end zone fairly quick. Was in trouble. He's going to have to scamper out of there, throw that ball away. That's exactly what he did. He is not fleet. He had a couple of guys coming at him. Smart play. Oh, yeah, get rid of that. He was out of the tackle box. He could do that. That pushes him to third down now. One thing that has not been a factor in this ball game that we're worried about, there's the hit. Got hit. So he he had to get rid of it. TJ oh, yeah. Winston Harding was putting the heat right on him. And Winston wanted a flag on that one, but Winston, know the rules. It's legal to do that. As the walk drops it off on the middle, Gelsimino again, and he's not quite to the first down. I started to say that the one thing, one fear that we had coming in, Walter, was the kick returns of T.J. Anderson, and he's only run one back for 10 yards in the game. Yeah, Maine's done a good job. They only, they've had one, one major error, and that's when the ball got hit here just a few minutes ago to continue that drive. Now it's going to be a timeout for Maine. This is a fourth down play, and they're going to have to go for it. They can't go. They uh -huh. must go for it. Must go for it. Got to have something here that's going to get them a couple of yards. Passing yards by the half. The first half, Maine had 66, 24 in the second period. George Southern has not thrown the ball here much, <laughs> none. And they have 40 yards. But that's not bad for them. I think they don't care. They, you know, you look at their stat sheet, it doesn't matter. They, they, in the whole season, they haven't thrown the ball very much, and they don't need to with, with that spread offense that they run. Their opponents have thrown the ball for 1,900 yards. Georgia Southern has thrown it for 968 coming into the game. They average 80 yards a game. They're below that now. Their opponents average almost 160 yards a game. Coach, so. Coach Wilder, in this situation, the offensive coordinator, has called several times in the past play action. Even though they only need, they need the first down. You mean go for the whole thing? He might go for the whole thing. Well, you're trailing 24 to 7, Walter. We'll see. I mean, with nine minutes to go, you suspect that they're going to try to get the first down, but you never know. A lot of shifting. It's, it's tights all the way. Looks like it's going to be Joe Cimino up the middle, leading the block. That's the first, first down. down. Marcus, yeah. Marcus Williams, sophomore, 225 pounder. Squares up, goes in, picks up the first down. That's inside of nine minutes now. Main trailing 24 to 7. Season on the line, the most successful season in Maine history under great adversity, losing 
players early and then losing the leader, the quarterback, down the stretch in the Richmond game. You want, Hat wants to go off to John Mesua. He's done an outstanding job. He's put a good drive on in this situation right now. He's driving the ball. He's throwing the ball nicely. There he's uh, he got sacked on a blitz. Coming on was Eric Hadley, the nose tackle. But Thomasville, Georgia, been there many times. The Rose Capital of Georgia. Blocking broke down up front. That's one of the few times they've been pressure on. He's going to get a clean cut right through the middle. There it is. Easy sack. Crowd getting into it now with eight minutes to go. Depending on the playoff, they could be here next week. Mesoir's looking and finds Pereira at the 25. He fumbles the ball and recovered again toward the sidelines. And either recovered or it went out at the 29-yard line. He tried to reverse after he caught it, and then he maybe trying to change hands on it. Yeah, he was the ball. Cha changing hands, lost the handle on the ball. You'll see the delivery right here. Here it is. Just, I think he hit his hip with it. He fumbled. Just flat out fumble. Third down. Audible on the line from Nuzzabaugh. Sophomore 6'5 quarterback steps back. Looking, looking, looking. Bang. Over the middle. Incomplete. Oh, I tell you, he missed a big one, though. Oh, he missed. McMahon yeah. is all alone in the end zone, and he didn't throw it. Derek Butler breaks it up. McMahon was all alone oh. in the end zone, plus Williams was all alone out in the flat. There wasn't anybody even 20 yards of him. Williams tried to force he, it in the middle to Joe Semino, and Joe Semino's getting up slow. Fourth down. Well, a little taunting, too. That could have been a flag. Yeah. There's no question in my mind that Maine had a touchdown. All he, he didn't see it. He's a youngster. He had two guys wide open, but one standing all alone. McMahon waving his arms in the end zone, begging for the ball. And, and that's where the inexperience comes in. You're locked on, and it's, it's tough to go. He gave a quick look to his left, and he focused on the one receiver rather than being able to scan deep and pick up the free when he hit in the end zone. It was a defensive error by uh, the Eagles. Right defensive corner was out of position. Georgia Southern wins 90% of their games on this field. This is a very difficult place to play football. It's a bowl built into a natural bowl here, and they have one and one and one here. Set up and caught from uh. behind. He held it too long. That's where the inexperience comes in again. You just can't hold the ball. It's fourth down. You've got to unload, give somebody a chance to make a play. Busco wasn't bad out on the left side. Flat and Maine turns it over. And that was Jude, Deshaun Jude and Eric McIntyre that wrap him up. And so, I'm not saying you've warmed the bus yet, but you're in a position now where you need a turnover, Walter, in a hurry. Yeah, that's too many yards with that speed in the secondary and the linebackers to go for it. We've got to put it out there and give somebody a chance. You're not going to make it. Fire the ball. Fire the cannon. Pull Vill the trigger. Villanova advances. They beat Fordham 24 to 10. So Villanova's going on another week. Here comes Austin up toward the 30-yard line. Tackled, tackled by number seven, 11, Brandon McGowan, and cleaned up by Cooper. Western Illinois is leading Western Kentucky 14 to 7. Miami over Virginia Tech, 49-27. And Navy beat Army, 58-12. Old Navy man, I'm going to mention that a couple of times. You don't mind, Walter, because you're an old Army man. Walter, Walter was a paratrooper. He told me all about that last night at dinner. I, I was, well, actually, he was diving into the food. <laughs> here they go outside again. Yeah, that's where they do it well. And here comes Zareem out to the near sideline, Zareem Walden. Out toward the 40-yard line. They have great outside breaks on that pitch play coming off the slot at the near sideline. Walden is tough. tough. You have to give a lot of credit, Georgia, Georgia Southern. They really love the football. They put a lot into it. And they are national champions. They've had uh, six national championships. They lead the nation every year in rushing or in the top five. They've got it going. And it's been going for 20 years. The Navy coach who beat Army so bad is the assistant from Georgia Southern last year. Who's the head coach here? He was the head coach here. Head coach here last year. The coach at Rhode Island came was, out of Georgia Southern. Was the he former head coach here. 
Williams on his own number. Oh, what a great athletic play by Cooper. Folks, did you see that? Flag he is out. Maybe something afterwards. Number four, Cooper, right all over him. If we get a chance to replay on this, look at the bottom of your screen if it shows. There he is. More 100-yard rushing games in a row than any quarterback in the history of 1AA football. Number 10, and he's a sophomore. Watch Cooper. Watch Cooper right there. Jump over the top and make the play. Flags were down. They apparently were off center. So nothing's going to happen. 16 carries, 44 yards for Chaz Williams today, though. That's under the, well under the 100 Walmart. Yes. Brendan Curry, 58. What a great leader he's been for the Bears. Defensive end, senior, co-captain, putting the heat off behind. There's Chaz yeah. in the open. Look out. 30. He he's can't off catch. the races. They trip him up at the five-yard line. A great save by Gomes. But we were talking about number 10, Chaz Williams, and his 100-yard dashes and he's had some 70s and 80s and he just wheeled one down to the main four yard line here it is just turn it in i watch him just go that's all he's the fastest no person has ever played in a main uniform there's no track people at main could beat him blazing speed main held him down for a long time but he finally saw daylight Four, two, three. 18 carries for 100 yards. He has it now, Walter. <laughs> he just went from 40 to 100 in one fatal swoop. 60-yard run. And he'll try to add more to it right now. Cooper's right on top of him. Oh, and I think Maine broke in. Maine was in a complete blitz, and it looked to me like they, they got in that neutral zone pretty quick. <laughs> Cooper was flying in. I think Cooper, Cooper may be near the airplane right now. He was coming so fast. He tried to look like the eagle down here that we saw earlier, flying over the top. Uh, dead ball foul, false start. Nope. On the offense, five yard okay. penalty, remains first down. All the crowd's upset at the officials now after all this. Well, the official still owes a little bit more than they're going to be able to pay back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Walter, you're, you're, you're a work of art. You really are. You're right. They, you think there's a little money in the bank sometime down the road? <laughs> we'll show you that a little bit later. Down to five minutes to go. Double or double slot. 407 to 141 in yardage. My goodness. It's not a shocker, but it's, it's painful to the nine-yard line. They, they do this to everybody. Big Pat Powell coming underneath. Big tackle. Size 19 shoot on Pat Powell. A little quiet crowd over there. Some of those folks on the airplane, they've kind of quieted down now. They see what's going on. Parents. That, there's Pat Powell on the screen, George, 55. I tell you, it's been a great effort by these Bears here oh. today. Oh, a great, great year for them. With all the controversy, all the things they've been through, being able to come back and come back. and Two players and for... Yes, you're over 100 now. Now there's a lot of members offside, but they can get back. To, he was not up under. And now they dive straight ahead. Take the pull back in there. Austin carried the ball 26 times for 140 yards. Williams 19 times, 101 yards. Walden 7 times for 82. Myers 8 times for 73. Walder, you didn't have that many yards on one of the teams you're coaching, you know, in a whole season. There are four guys doing it. My goodness gracious. You talk about the slot backs that kill you in this offense. They're an offensive machine. And they don't throw the football. No. Every, you know, some coaches don't like to throw it. But once in a while, they don't like to throw it ever unless they're forced to do it. Why? And they score a timeout. That's their last timeout. He saw, I believe, number 40 was coming up. He wanted to make a blitz out of it. Well, we still have four minutes of excitement to go in a great football season for the Maine Black Bears. We're coming back. Stay tuned. There is the original Bald Eagle. You know who he is? He certainly is. Eric Russell, a former coach here that set this program in motion. He coached against the Bears the last time down. One of the great college coaches of all times. One win over Maine. 1-0. Third down. Long count for Williams. He'll take it on his own. It's away from one man. Toward the end zone touchdown. He's hard to bring down. And he's getting a little tired. They slip through. Cooper and Austin, you don't see that very often. You don't see that very often. It's just tremendous leg drive. And the thing that I look at is the strength shots on these 
these players from the uh, Georgia Southern. Tremendous leg strength showed there. Second half has been all Georgia Southern. They got. We have our play of the game. You're going to get an interesting call. We've got a clarification on something which is going to be kind of interesting. So stick with us. Kevin's extra point is up, and it's good. Seven plays, 72 yards, three minutes and 24 on the drive. A five-yard TD run for a guy that sets records all the time, Chaz Williams. He's getting so much press coverage down here. I was told the other day that they only make him available on two days a week now. The other players are available five days a week. He's only available two days a week because he got so many people that want to interview him. Chaz Williams. A 5'10", 210-pound sophomore. I don't know what his future is, but uh, for you know, the next couple of years, I know what his future is here. You know, one thing, he's got a couple more games probably to go this year. Yeah, he's, he's just going to add to that rushing yardage. The top rushing quarterback ever in one double A as far as 100-yard games, and he's got another one tacked to it today. He had maybe, well, you know, whether to, you know, we talk about Sunday players, he maybe was a little taller than 5'10". They like him a little taller than 5'10", but... He... I'll be surprised, George, if we don't see him anymore because they've got two playoff games left in the yep. way the main Bears hit. You might see Trey Hunter here yeah. pretty quick. I think it would be a smart move uh, on the Eagles' spot to put in that... 31-7. to seven. Put in that backup quarterback and save number 10 for the future. All right, Maine will be receiving the ball and trying to get something more to get on the board here. At Statesboro, Georgia. Game all turned around on one play. I have no question about it, Paul. At the goal line. Here we go. We're going to tell you about that play that turned the game. Ball flags it down. We got some trouble. Hold on. Hold it for A little scrum going on out there. Some temper started to fly, and boys will be boys. And the officials break it up very, very quickly there. I see three flags down. <laughs> Everybody that had one through it. Personal foul. Going to go against Maine only. Only? No offsetting? I think there was a late hit in there that came in. Yeah, and I think that started the whole trouble. They're going to give half, half, play. half to play. have a dead ball, personal foul. By the receiving team, penalize them half the distance oh, to the cost goal for two yards. Run. Yeah, first down. It, it was a late hit <laughs> after, after the play. Some player said it's, it's that that shot was worth two yards, huh? Now Maine is going to, have to be careful. They can really get it, make it lucky if they don't. New quarterback. Legree's just come in. Yeah, new quarterback. And then a pile up. All right, the play of the game will be brought to you by. Well, they're, here it goes. The play of the game will be brought to you by Bangor Savings Bank, a proud supporter of Black Bear football. I want you to look at this. It's called a forward pass. Can you imagine that? Watch it. It's That's called, a, oh my called a forward oh, pass. Oh, it was painful the first time. It it's worse the second time. Main's ball. And it turned the game around. On about the eight-yard line going in in a 14-7 game. And here comes the punt, and, it, and it, uh, that's the other play of the game, and it came down. The and play after the, that. And the play after that, and it turned the game right around. Good job, Skip. All right, down Maine goes, putting new people in the ball game. MoMA comes in. How, Walter, I've been around this game long, but you know more than anybody else I know. How can you call that a forward pass? Well, George, you just put it bluntly. You can't. That was called by the lines person, and he just absolutely flat blew it. And that's why you love instant replay, because it, you, you lose something because of that. And all of them you say it's 31-7, to seven, but I want to tell you something, man. That turned the game around. That was... It was that was, 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 was going to have the ball on the 10-yard line. 10-point game, and they had the ball inside the 10 going in. And they had been moving the ball on the ground. You can't give a team like Georgia Southern... Breaks. You pump new blood, new oxygen into them. MoMA comes out to the 10-yard line. Right, we're going to show you the play of the game again. And let you <laughs> we're going to show this one a lot. Now, this turns the game around. The, the official call that a forward pass. I will just, on fourth down, Maine will have to punt. I will drop 
<laughs> right, it's punting out of the end zone. That's going to take good coverage. Drop the case. <laughs> All right, from the end zone, Mello standing back. Mello's, Mello's had a good day of kicking, getting oh, the ball sure. up, getting good height on it. Look at that one, Judd. Beautiful punt. A great punt. All the way back to TJ. Beautiful punt. Look at the coverage that Maine's going to get on that, and they're going to down Anderson down at the 45-yard line. A brilliant punt by Mello. There's a flag back there, too. I don't know what it is, but I, it could be against... Well, he was not roughed, I'll tell you that, because I watched him. It's oh. back at the line of scrimmage. I believe it was against... Uh, is it a tripping call? I have no idea, because I watched I watched the, the attempt, to, but the blocking it, and they did Cap not rough him. Captain Curry is going out, trying to get the call to see what it is. And Maine will refuse that. Well, unless it would give them possession. Well, it, yeah, but I don't think they'll have to measure. They're looking at it, what it's going to be. If it's a five yard, it was yeah. forked down and four. I, it would give them possession if they. So we'll wait and see. He's going to, it's going to, it's going to give him a first down, I believe. It's going to give Maine a first down, I think. The defense. Five yard penalty is enough distance for a first oh, yeah, down. It's going to give Maine a first down. Again, great coverage, great, great kick. Mello has had a wonderful year kick, and he's averaged almost 38, 39 yards, and he has two years left. Young, young Maine team, seven seniors. So Maine fans, you're going to see a lot of good football in the future from the Bears. Coach Cosgrove and his staff have done an outstanding job, and you've got to give a lot of credit to the, to the athletes, what they've done. And they'll get it put together now with a big recruiting year and be ready to go again. you got to know one thing, and you got to feel sorry for one player today. I got in my mind the last few minutes to know that Jake Eaton is standing on the sidelines having to watch the last few games of the season after the career he had. And that's the breaks of football. I mean, in injuries happen. In injuries happen, but what an outstanding leader, great student, and one of the finest quarterbacks ever played at the University of Maine. Momo, as Maine gets it back to the 25, maybe close to the 25. The clock is... Down to a minute and 20. We're running out of visitation rights to, to Georgia. Now you have for the tailback situation for Maine, you have, of course, Williams. And then backed up behind Williams, you have Henry that's been injured, hasn't played the last three weeks. So Moma steps in 29. He's a great back. And as good as any of them is number 33, the freshman, Montel Owens. So they've got a whole stable of backs that are ready to run next year. Strong, powerful Offensive line is back intact. Receivers are all back. Only one missing is Gelsimino. Second down. Uh, coming outside, MoMA out to the 29 yard line. Picking up the first down. So the Bears are hanging on to the football down to 30 seconds. While I have a chance here, I want to thank. Staff member Rick, who worked with me here today, did a brilliant job working to my left, and my producer Ray to my back, who did a great job up here, helped me out tremendously down here. Wish them well. They'll be working for ESPN next week, I believe, if you get a home game here. They probably pay more than I do. <laughs> a lot more? I said a lot more. All right, here we go. There's Moma back up to the 30 yard line again. Flags coming out. The boys are letting themselves know this is going to be the end of the game. Well, they stop it. Five seconds to go. <laughs> Tim Frockmorton will be out there somewhere here at the end of the game, too, I'm sure. That's a personal foul against Maine. I guess they're making a statement here of some, some sort here at the end. This is a... This is not a place full of faint-hearted, Walter, is it? It's, it's you know, that General MacArthur once said it's the closest you ever get to mortal combat without going on the battlefield. And these guys came in here, and they have played hard and deep, and they'll shake hands when the whole thing's over. Main fans want to be very proud of what the Bears have done this year. They won 11 football games. This year. Personal foul against the offense. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. Replay second down. It's a good one, whatever he was. <laughs> Whatever it was, it was worth 15 yards back to the 15 yard line with five seconds to go. And this will be the end of the game. And a great trip and a wonderful experience. The clock's going to run down. That's it. And that's it. The game's over. And the Georgia Southern has advanced 31 to 7 over the University of Maine Black Bears. And
Jack is going to be greeted by the press corps and everybody down below. We'll be, and we're going to be wrapping up here very shortly, but let's uh, take this break to our stations along the line and we'll be right back. Okay, we'll do. All right, the final score, 31 to seven, main season is over. And standing down below with uh, hopefully a happy coach in the sense of the way his team participated today, Jack Cosgrove with Tim Frockport. Thanks, thanks very much, George. Uh, Jack, first of all, it's amazing what one play can do to turn around a game. And I tell you what, you do not want to see the replay on that, on that play. Yeah. I'm sure we'll find some other plays too that we didn't we didn't execute and do the things right. But uh, you know that's the way football goes. Sometimes we got to live with it and uh, learn from it and grow from it. You can play an option team and still not be able to defend this Georgia Southern team. That's just amazing at that attack. Very good. You know we knew they had a lot of ways to hurt us. They found ways. They coached very well. They found schemes. They did things to get their pitch game going. Probably better than they had most of mostly throughout the season. You saw us kind of do a good job with the fullback and a good job with the quarterback, you know, in, in reducing their their yardage and, and, and their, their, their touches, but they, they got the pitch game going and hurt us. For the second year in a row, you set a new standard for Maine football. It's hard to think about that right now. What are you going to do when you get in there and talk to these guys that have to say goodbye to this terrific season? Well, we're still not there yet, you know, and uh, we got to keep working and we got to learn from the guys that are leaving and, and, and keep patching on the torch and, and hoping that we get opportunities like this down the road. This was a great challenge to us today. I'm, I'm proud of our guys, uh, and certainly uh, we don't have to hang our heads over anything, but, uh, you know, this isn't, we're not finished. We got unfinished business in this playoff deal, and we just got to get back to work and get here next year. Thanks very much, Jack. Terrific season again for the Black Bears, who ran into a juggernaut here at Georgia Southern. They put up 31 points, and Maine just could not answer. Let's go back upstairs to George Hale. All right, thank you very much, Tim. Well, you know, I've been with Jack Cosgrove as a player and as a coach. Walter, you have too. I just hope that this guy, who's going to be at Maine for a very long time, amazingly, Jack Cosgrove doesn't even have a contract. I'm hope that, I hope there's some negotiation going on somewhere. Well, I would hope so, too, because Jack Cosgrove is one of the great coaches in uh, 1AA football today and in college football, and he's going to be a hot commodity, so I hope the university steps up and uh, gets after things in a hurry. I tell you, some people will be looking at that. Well, he's a great, he's a fine example of what a coach should be. All right, the CES main player of the game, and it's a quick unanimous vote. It's going to be the 21 man. Marcus Williams has another great performance he can go any rich direction he wants and when he squares away Walter he does a great job main player of the game brought to you by CES civil engineering services engineering ideas that are right for Maine he's an outstanding athlete scholar and he's going to be terrific for us Marcus Williams out of Amherst Mass and we love it all right we will have a quick wrap up when we come back we will be taking this final break <laughs> 